Do it. We, we are we are calling yes. <laughs> Wait, hang on a minute. Was the specialist? Oh, talk for me. Hello. Hello. Talk for me. Oh, I need to put my cans on. We are fucking booming. Through. I don't think you've got a set of cans. Oh, I can get you a set of cans. I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. If we can, I'll get them a set of cans. Ah. Hold on, back in a second. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. So, wasn't the specialist Alex von Brockdorf? No, wasn't it was the Sylvester Sloan. Was, I'm Alex and Sharon Stone. Was it, it was, not? yeah. Oh man, Von Von is my. Go get the headphones. Uh, Brockdorf is my working name. I dropped the Von. Alex Brockdorf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Dib dib dib. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you make it your middle name? Because it's my it's my real name. It's like my Christian name. It's got the Von in it, but I just work. I dropped the Von for work. Hang on, your Christian name has got the Von in it. My Christian name is Alex Von Brockdorf. You mean your full name? Yeah. Right, okay. Christian name is first name. Oh, is it? Yeah, Christian name is your first name. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. My government name. Christian name means first name, doesn't it? Christian name means first name, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, surname, oh. Christian name. <laughs> That's a very Sorry. weird, I left you talking about Sharon <laughs> Stone becoming Christians. Yeah. No, um, my, my, my government name is, is take, Von Brockdorf. You take that one. Okay. Okay. Take. What's that gone into? Number three. Okay, cool. All right. There we so go. Hello. Oh, mother. What am I on? Two? No. Two. Yeah, okay. We all good? Yeah, good. Back um, in. So the specialist was with uh, yeah, Sharon Stone, Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. Are they related? No. No. Anyway, what have you guys been up to since the last episode? I was pre-job uh, last time we did it, I think, and I went off and did a film and... Oh, yes. It's that you can't talk about. Can't talk about oh. it, but it is going to be quite something. Mm. It's yeah. so exciting. Sorry, that, well, this is, this is the problem. Sorry, is you can't talk about it. You can't talk about stuff that you've been doing because NDAs, stuff like that. We can talk to you about stuff we did a year ago. What if? Yeah. What if I say one second a caveat with right listeners? What we're going to talk about, you can't mention to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> what if you do that? Well, that's then, almost suggesting that your podcast is not listened to by a wide number of people. A wide number? We can pretend. A large that. number. We can pretend. A wide, that. We can pretend wide, that. Wide, wide there, no, I can. You know, there's yeah, the things that they say. Well, you know, what's been released into the thingy? So I mean, like, I went and did a film for A24. Uh, which was shot in the UK and will be coming out at some point next year. What's it called? It's called Warfare. Called Warfare. Yeah. Warfare, and it is directed by. Um, it's a collaboration between Alex Garland and Ray Mendoza, and that's all I can say. What, which is what's really Ray annoying. Mendoza produced? Ray Mendoza is a former Navy SEAL. Um, and he was Alex Garland's uh, military advisor on Civil War. I've not seen that yet. Have you seen that? No, I need to. Yeah, and it's ridiculous. Seen it? that I yet, haven't no. seen it. What's the reviews on it? Well, I've not seen it, so I can't. I, I, can't. I, th I think it's. I think it's. I think no, what's people the were. The people, reviews. Oh, the reviews. It's. <laughs> it's kind of split, but from my take of it, it's. Uh, from Alex Garland's perspective, it's a, it's to do with journalism more than anything else. It's not meant to be polarizing. Yeah, people were expecting it to be quite polarizing, expecting it to be about what's happening in the states at the moment, and I think it was marketed in that way. And I mean, you call it civil war, and uh, it wasn't what people were expecting. So, but uh, but the the stuff that I've you know kind of dived into it the kind of camera work and the way that they shot it and I find that absolutely fascinating but you direct as well right hardly man. I used to before I wanted to you know I, I went down the directing route as being what I wanted to do and then you know the acting bug hits you and then that just completely pivots you off um but no I've been I directed music videos and things like that um which were fun but you know, maybe maybe in the future, I don't know. But I probably help produce from right now more than anything else, oh. alongside everything. So, what's the topic of conversation today? Because I've had, you guys gave me no homework. Well, no, I spoke to Bags 
because we first said yeah. we should go and do I'd hit- like to be involved in the topic discussion no, I for my own you, episode and it was hitmen slash assassins because the Trump assassination had just happened but now we but are but we were talking that about was, that beforehand that was ages can ago. you guys hear me because I can't hear myself oh really yeah I can't hear, I can hear you really I can't hear myself yeah but if, but if you can hear me that's fine I, I can't can hear you. I can't hear myself I can hear myself oh, whoa, but hitmen yeah. slash assassins well, is a really yeah. good yeah. topic anyway yeah Okay, so Hitman. Yes, I remember you messaging we, me now. We should yeah. say Hit People. Hit People. Hit People. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off. I knew that. I'm sure I knew female that. assassins out there not going. Hey, Lefem Nikita. I'm a hit. I'm, I'm not a hit man. Imagine I'm a that. Hit woman. Imagine that. The, rate, the news is on. God. Like, a hit man, um, an unknown hit man is like, I'm a hit woman. <laughs> I'm a God damn it. I spent <laughs> 20 years being a hit woman and I get misgendered on the television. L- L- Liz McConaughey, yeah. Chinny Chinook Chinook. Chick, she yeah. refers to herself as crewman. Mm. She have any, she's like, I'm a fucking crewman. 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 Yeah. Man. Human. Anyway, I don't want to go down that route. Um, <laughs> what did you make of the Trump assassination? Are you buying into any conspiracy theories? Would you like us to for the purpose of this podcast? I'm, no, I'm asking the question. I, I, think, I think he is incredibly lucky not to be dead, given the range that it was at. I still don't know the exact model of 130 gun. 130 yards. Was yeah. I still don't know the exact model of gun that iron was used. Iron sights. Was it, 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 it iron sights? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Still should be able to, to should be able to hit a human sized target out of three. There's a there's a uh, yeah. there's a bunch of gun tubers out there. There's Mike Glover who used to be a green uh, beret, and then there's Demolition Ranch, which yeah. unfortunately the dude was the wearing, dude was wearing a wearing Demolition his t-shirt. Ranch T-shirt. Yeah, I mean no, you, you, yeah, yeah, you can't get press like that. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, and Brandon Herrera, who is another gun tuber, yeah, but he actually did the kind of from the distance that the shooter was to the podium, checked out how two two three would work and if it wouldn't. And like you say, I think it was literally Trump's head just turned at, at the right moment and it went through his ear. But also, ear. I don't, I don't think the guy was a, a very good shot. There's, no, there's stories that he tried to join the local gun club. He did join the local gun club, and he got turned down or kicked off the. It's got nothing because to do with him being a good shot. It's like how the like, fuck did he get that no, close exactly, to Trump yeah. on a podium with the Secret Service? You know, you can you can see their spotting teams on the roof right. above him. If it was a movie, <laughs> that would be totally fine. That, yeah. if, it was, if you were watching that as a movie, right? So yeah. imagine you're watching a movie and it's a, it's a presidential assassination attempt, and we would be sitting there going. <laughs> That would never happen. <laughs> You'd never get that close. No fucking way. No way. Iron sights. No way. There would be girlfriends and wives around the nation. God, I would have made that shot. <laughs> it was, who was it? It was Tim Kennedy, who's been on the Rogan podcast a bunch, mm. who's a former Special Forces sniper. And he was and breaking, UFC fighter, yeah. And UFC fighter. And he was breaking down like the process at which the... Uh, Secret Service kind of counter sniper teams would do like the week before they'd be like doing ground analysis of like where if you were going to shoot or do something would you be and they'd be you know the kind of inverse pitch roof 150 metres away with a ladder that goes up to the top you just kind of go what went wrong in well they had someone happen. on there they had someone on there they had they, they, also- they had a cop the cop goes up he puts their head over the top the shooter turns round, flags him, and then apparently the cop drops down to preserve their own life, and then comes back up. Shooter goes, holy shit, bang, 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 which is why it's quite a rapid rate of fire. And then you get the counter sniper. But they had a cop business. stagging on there before the shooter was up there. And in the building was Secret Service. In the building that he was on. Was Who is service. that banging around upstairs? Honestly, it is really, it's making very difficult to watch <laughs> this TV God. show. I'm, watching i i think i think the biggest problem was from what i've learned and read is that there wasn't good enough comms between the various forces that were on the ground yeah and there was a misunderstanding about who it was on the roof people were seeing somebody on the roof going there's somebody on the roof is is that person it was 24 minutes yeah 22 minutes because mm. there is a video of it yeah. it's 22 minutes or 24 minutes where the guy is spotted and thought to be, hmm, that's weird, by a mm. civvy, and civvy videoing. Yeah, yeah. And it's 22 or 24 minutes before b- between that, that point of the, and the spot. And, and they're calling, they're saying, hey, officer, you can hear them on it. Yeah. Between that point and him taking the shot is 22 minutes. Civvy see him and say, there's a fucking guy up there. And then he obviously isn't Secret Service or police. And they're saying, hey, officer, 
22 minutes before alert from the civvies and him taking the shot. It's not like minutes of him, it's about 22 minutes. I didn't realise it was that long. It's I that long. It was, I thought it was four or five. No, it's that long, 22 okay. minutes. It's batshit crazy, batshit crazy. Now, are either of you <laughs> extremely anti-Trump? Do you think you're like, oh God, do you look at him and hate him? I'm, I'm definitely not pro-Trump. Okay, here's a question mm. for you then. Um, what did you think of his reaction to that shot? So, if from a PR perspective, short term, brilliant, could not fault it. Um, I don't think if somebody had shot at me and they'd hit me, glanced me, nicked my ear, and I was on the ground and bleeding, I would be chewing through that podium with my eyelids. I would not be thinking, right, how can I turn this into a PR snapshot? He absolutely nailed it. There's a difference here, though, between you and him. Uh, <laughs> there's one I want. There's one which, I want to which, point out. Which one? My my, my yeah, there is, is one I want to point out. Well. There yeah, is yeah. one I want to point out. Yeah. You've been shot at multiple times. You understand? He is not. So his reaction, mm. he is in shock. I would yeah, argue. Probably. He's not quite sure. He's in chaos mode, mm. right? Whereas you, or any of us, you're reacting to being shot at. I never mm. mind hit. Being shot at, we'd be like, "Fuck, get down, dig it." get myself as low as possible, especially got no weapon, and then try and work out what I'm going to do to get out of it. Yeah, so if I was me... That isn't him. No. But, but so short term, regardless, I think I think in terms of, of what he could have got PR-wise, he nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Not a fan of his at all. But I think what he then did in the subsequent two weeks that followed it, screwed screwed the pooch in time. Oh, it's not it's not about the what happens afterwards, but you're saying it's his reaction to coming under fire. But equally mm. he had like, eight people covering him. And I don't know if you can hear some of the radio chat like shooter down and stuff like that. But he kind of allows him to say like back off, shows the crowd that he's not dead, which would have been carnage, and then just fist pumps the sky. Mm. And says Fight, fight, and then you've got. Oh the, my and, god! And then you've got it's the just f- legendary. But the thing is, the, the, I was listening to a, a podcast about this. Is like you can't train that. He can no. say his reactions in the moment is like, "This is what I'm doing." Boom! Then they get him out of there. There's been assassination attempts before. You know, oh yeah, and you see the pre- or um or uh, what you call it false alarms, and they get rushed off. And the president is always like shock in the face. Rushed and they rushed off. They don't say anything. They don't do anything, right? Obviously, it's a slightly different circumstance. He got fucking shot, but but there is a good one. It was from the eighties, and I can't remember if Reagan. it was Reagan. Reagan got and he had, shot at had an attempted uh, attempt on his life. A period really of time. Close to the pistol, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, two two yeah. revolver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but remember, the best part of it is he had the attempt on his life, which was bad. But then there was a second attempt. Well, wasn't it? Sorry, he was at one of these com- uh, rallies, and someone pops a balloon. And he held on to his custodians and he just looked straight back in the crowd and go, ha, didn't get me this time. <laughs> and, then car- <laughs> and then carries on. And you kind of go, yeah, dude, that's, that's that, pretty, that's a great that's pretty cool. Funnily, we did, we did a stage show called Assassins. And it's all about the presidential assassinations. And there have been a lot. And we were providing all the guns for it. So we had to go and match up all the guns. And um, there was one gun that we couldn't get and I can't remember who it was. It was a Bulldog revolver, which is a small pocket revolver. And what happened for real... Have you got I can't remember who it was. Have on the wall? No, we don't. No. Um, I think it was Grosvenor. Uh, and the guy walked up to him, he had a handkerchief over it, and he shot him at point-blank range. Um, or tried to. Uh, we couldn't find an exact match. I found a revolver and went, this looks similar what about th- th- this and they went yep great um, <laughs> it was about five times the size so the Lamat revolver which is the humongous one that's there keep uh, yeah, go on, keep yeah. top left um, that one uh, was the one we tried to substitute in for it but I love there's been those types of pistols that have specifically been made for that purpose throughout history mm-hmm. and you kind of look at the I think it's called the Liberator. Do you want to pause here? Well, we there we go. Watch out, well, listeners. We'll pause because this, this is making serious, some uh, yeah, feedback. Yeah, mic is, yeah. work going on. We'll cut this out. No, the, 
no, I'll keep it in. Seconds. <laughs> Fine. Seconds. Well, whilst the, while the stuff's going on, we'll start talking about the Liberator, which is a teeny tiny little pistol. Here we go. This is like a Derringer type just, thing. Um, Single sorry, shot. The mic was blocking the view of your mouth. Okay. So, and everyone loves to look at your mouth, Max. So, one second. Right. Let's, so let's restart. That's Much pretty groovy. Now that back. So this is this is a two two revolver. Uh, not even a revolver. Two two pistol, concealed pistol. Uh, you load it like that, very very simply, and then you can conceal that. And but there's right. there's there's Bang. loads of these sorts of things. There's the little liberator pistol that. that looks amazing mm-hmm. from World War Two. Um, then there was this weird one which was like a glove that had a pressel device on it, and you would essentially kind of oh, fist yeah. check someone, and it would let off around. Yeah. That was the the SOE one. Yeah, yeah, and then the SOE had that fully suppressed, integrated the well rod. The well rod. So the well rod is a, is a is is an assassination weapon. That's purely what it's designed for, because it is. Um, built from the ground up to not look like a gun and also to, to come apart. If the well rod you ever see, it looks like a bike pump. Ah, it, it is, it is right. a tube. Yeah, yeah. So when, whenever, whenever we teach actors about guns, we explain to them you know, the, the difference between real life and film. And one of the things we talk about is suppressors and silencers in the real world versus what happens in the films. And that it's completely unrealistic. Explain in films. Explain for people. So in films, we call them mouse fartners, where they just go pew pew pew, like you, and you can shoot somebody next to somebody, and they go, "Oh, what happened to Dave?" And Dave's in a pile of blood on the floor. That's not how it works. A suppressor will reduce the crack, reduce the severity. Modern day special forces use a lot of suppressors on their weapons, but it's mostly around making the sound more bearable when you're in a small confined space and you're, you're working in a team and somebody's firing a, we- a weapon next to you. It's not about necessarily about trying to shoot somebody without being seen because that's highly unli- unlikely. Well, that's one of the other things yeah, mm. on that point. We'll is, come to it. Yeah, go on, yeah, go yeah. on. Um, so so um, the well rod, and, and another thing is if you've got a gun that's semi-automatic, i.e. that every time you fire it reloads for you, there are parts of the weapon that move. They make a noise, but also as they move, sound comes out the back of the gun and the sides of the gun as well. So anything semi-automatic is automatically not as... You're not able to suppress it or silence it as much as you would a single shotgun. So the well rod is a single-shot pistol, and is designed to be used with subsonic ammunition, so very low-charged ammunition, so the bang is already reduced. Nothing moves, nothing opens up when you fire it. So um, you another problem, if you're trying to do an assassination, if you're using a semi-automatic, when you fire the gun, it'll eject a shell, and you've got to scrabble around and find that, because actually that's one thing that can be matching a gun to a gun. All the imp- impressions that work in parts of the weapon, the extractor claw, the bolt or the slide leave on that they can be traced and matched whereas digging a, a, bu- a bullet and a round out of somebody which is what they normally do in the films they dig you know something out of a wall it'd be completely pancake flat that's you reminded me of a movie to... that i can't place <clears throat> batman dark knight ice bullets ice oh that sounds familiar what was that from what it was a movie and I can't it will come to me in a minute, mm. in a minute where they were trying to work out <coughs> like you're saying with the ballistics trying to work out who shot who and they were trying to work out well maybe this is an ice bullet and they've ban- managed I mean it's complete film bullshit oh my God. but as a concept do you think that's kind of cool like, I do not think that so you, <laughs> you so what about a wooden bullet a wooden bullet would work because that would fragment in a way that, like, or the combination of the two have you heard of something called picrete no. So Pycrete was an invention in World War Two that is a combination of wood chips and ice, and it's incredibly hard. And they made harbors from Pycrete, and it would float, and it would take weeks to melt. It's like the perfect combination of the two. Uh, I don't think it's been tried, but you could make a Pycrete round, and then somebody, but they'd still have wooden chips in them, so there'd still be stuff to trace. But anyway, so going back to the well rod, the other thing the well rod has is is the suppressor is is part of the gun. It's not something you screw on. The, the suppressor is built into the gun and it has baffles. So the way a suppre- suppressor works, it's basically a series of chambers that allow the gas to expand. 
So that what causes the Big Bang is the the gas expanding from a small tube into the big world. So the, <coughs> the, the chambers in the suppressor allow that expen- expansion to be slower, so it muffles the sound. The way the well rod works, it has these little chambers, but also in between the chambers, it's got a rubber disc between each one. And every time you fire around, the, the, the bullet, the projectile, will punch through that disc and then seal back up. So your first round is the quietest. As you fire more rounds, those baffles will start to deteriorate and they'll get louder. In the well rod? Yeah. Oh, huh, interesting. So you'll have to replace the baffles after mm. probably about 10 shots. But then it's, so. if it's an assassination gun, but like, that's it's it. not designed to it's be... It's not designed to be. But the well rod doesn't have um, like good sights or anything like that because it's not designed to be shot at long range. It's designed to be walking up behind somebody in a... Uh, a, a tube train or something like that, and literally firing into their back and walking away. But it's, that was, I mean, that was the, the Liberator, was it? It was because obviously the, were they Mackie in, the, in France in the Second World War? Yeah. And the Allies were basically just dropping containers full of weapons, and one of them being little Liberator pistols and various things to try and allow the Mackie to, in the days before invasion en masse, just to basically make as much drama for the Germans as possible. And these things were machined, stamped out of metal that cost nothing. And you could have a single round and it was just cheap. It was like the grease gun. The grease guns are really yeah. cheap yeah. gun, uh, whereas kind of Thompson's weren't. Um, there is innovation s- is, the, is the key to all of it, really. There is a, there's also um, something called the Delisle carbine. Um, and this is a, a Lee-Enfield... You two are fucking geeks, by the way, for this stuff. It's, it's How have you my got so much job, on it? Hugh. It's no, because you get you get you get, well, a you, <laughs> you get a production coming to you and going, okay, this is the story we need to tell, and this is the time le- time frame that it's being told in. Plus, how do you make it look cool? And inevitably, if you mm. say, how do you make it look cool? You, you kind of go, okay, what's the coolest thing we could... Okay, I accept that it's professional knowledge. Okay. But, but the Delisle carbine is cool because of a number of things. Um, it is a Lee-Enfield r- rifle that has been chopped up and turned into a bolt-action 9mm. Mi- mi- um, it's got a really long suppressor and a really short ba- barrel. And... Uh, but the way that it works, a normal Lee Enfield, when you open the bolt, will eject the shell out to the side. This one, the magazine, it's still got the same large rifle round size, but inside it's got a 9mm ma- magazine, which is smaller, off to one side, and then the rest of it is velvet lined. And when you, when you cock the weapon, the case comes out and falls back into the magazine into the velvet lined bit to make as little noise noise as you can (laughs) but also so that you don't leave a shell quality so and the the guy that invented it to test it to make sure it was silent went onto the roof of Whitehall the old war the old war rooms which is now um, now a hotel and shot over horse guards to see if anybody would hear it nobody did so that's the that's the Delisle carbine they're very cool very Crazy. cool guns. Um, anyway, assassination films, because we haven't talked about a single movies. film yet. Mo- movies. Well, you've got series movies. as well. I'm on, yeah. Kill- I'm on Killing Eve at the moment. Oh, are you? Mm, nice. have you seen I've not done that, yeah. but I, I found one of my favourite TV shows of all time, which is about a hitman. What is it? It's called Mr. Inbetween. Oh, what a series! <laughs> have you seen this, back? No, but I've seen a few clips of it. Oh, and my he's God. told me I need to it watch is, it. And I've got a friend, yeah. a good friend, who's ex-Pool SFC. Yeah. And he looks exactly like Mr. Inbetween. Does he? I only, I only discovered that last year. It's the best what? moment is when you find one what of these TV it? shows that you didn't know existed. Amazing. Then it turns out it's got three seasons. And you kind of go, mm. great. That's The, the Aussies throw out some awesome stuff, you know. Yeah. But it's the writing in it that is... It's Explain Mr. Inbetween. I've, I've mentioned this to a lot so of people. So thankfully, I, I know a fair bit. So the, the guy that wrote this is also the star of it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, so what's he, his name? Oh, I have to remind myself. This is why I've got my phone oh, next to me this time. You through it. I look it up. Go on. So this guy used to drive cabs in Victoria um, and decided that he wanted to tell stories. And he basically ended up going to uh, an Australian film school and making a short film called Mr. Magic or Magic Man or something like that, um, which was shot super... Scott Ryan. Scott Ryan. Yeah. 
it was shot super low budget and he uh, that you can find it on the internet somewhere uh, and then what happened is that kind of quietened down but then what happened was this name is going to escape me it is Edgerton's brother who is a stunt coordinator and actor if you can find that he found the short film and basically managed to make it into Nash Nash, Nash Edgerton mm. so he managed to get some financing behind it and turn it into a longer form piece. They then spent years pitching it to Australian TV shows. And I think they got the first season out and then they basically got, they pitched it to AMC and AMC picked it up for two seasons. The reason that I love it is A, the writing is unbelievable. Um, but also the way they shot the third season is they shot it in continuity, I think, um, like a film and then they chop it up into these 30 minute episodes I don't think I've seen the third series third season oh my god when did that come e- out? have you seen when did the that come ending out? when did that come out uh, a couple of years ago maybe a bit more than that but the ending the ending you've told me about oh is that in the cab god it's so good in the cab in the cab I don't want to ruin it for you yeah. dude I would I would tell you how it ends but it is one of my favourite at- endings for a TV show of all time um, but the things that I love about Mr. Inbetween is it's not just a TV show about a hitman. The guy happens to be a hitman, mm. but he's also a father who has a young daughter and a failed marriage, and his brother has, uh, I'm not sure what his, his disease is, but he's, you know, uh, bedridden at home. And so alongside all of this kind of hitman business, he's also being a dad and his marriage is failing and then he gets another girlfriend I have seen season three <laughs> and that moment you know there's a moment where I don't want to ruin it but he basically has to help his brother pass I was in tears man and this is a film about a hitman yeah. um, but the thing that I love about the writing is is they, they kind of the way they do it is very organic but there's a moment where this guy is getting sent off to go and shoot the leader of a biker gang and they're just driving in a car talking about who's their favourite James Bond. And then that conversation continues. They're in the car, they're talking about Timothy Dalton, high five. Yeah. <laughs> and then they get to the spot and he's kind of getting his rifle ready, he's getting his ghillie suit ready and they're still talking about James Bond. And, and they keep going and you can tell, you're like, dude, you're about to fucking go and drop a guy. But they're talking about James Bond. And that kind of, that kind of writing is delicious. That's what's amazing about this. That's what I loved about this season. Uh, the, the series sorry is that he's exactly what you talk about there because it, there's something really unique about Aussie the, the Aussie relaxed nature relaxed culture of the bloke just the blokey bloke mate the mm. bloke bloke in my Australian accent I was about to say was, was that yeah, meant to be yeah, Australian relaxed yeah. just Aussie humour it's something you know in the same way there's mm. something really unique about the the, 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 the stereotypical British cockney white boy geezer, geezer. accent mm. you know on uh, what you call it um, uh, a Nick Love snatch movie. lock cake. stock yeah. there's something yeah. really unique about the Aussies mm. it's like, it, it just, you, you can't help but be entertained by it and just go rela- laid back as fuck and in that season it's laid back as fuck for probably 80% I'm not of a bad guy episode. mate I'm just putting holes in people yeah and then 20% of it is deadly serious and really fucking dark yeah, real yeah. dark and it's that, it's that pivot yeah which is so great and it's family man caring loving fa- not family man caring loving father caring loving lover just puts holes in people puts holes in people but there's there's also like <laughs> so some of my favourite drama of, that makes me happy is Aussie crime drama and you go back to the original Animal Kingdom which it just makes me so happy and then there's is it The Stranger that came out recently oh brilliant film again and it's all that it's that it's not assassin movie it's not assassin movie you've not seen The Stranger no oh, but it blends I've that kind of like though. what's it about generic fucking Aussie bloke who's like in a you know, point in time which is really hard but I'm gonna go kill people it's so. got it's got a, a mainstream Hollywood actor an Aussie guy which is his name is I can't remember what <laughs> a mainstream Hollywood guy yeah um, one of the Hemsworths a, Aussie actor but it, the we can't live on it's not assassin but but he is an undercover copper yeah and he is trying to befriend one of dozens of suspects in a child kidnapping and murder 
Joel Case, Edgerton Joe, yes, it, and our, our, our lovely British yeah, and, and, uh, Sean and, Harris and it's gone on for years oh, he's, and they've whittled, terrifying. they've whittled it down to yeah, mm. he, yeah he's so and, terrifying and he's trying to befriend this guy and it is it's nothing like Mr um, yeah, really. it is dark and tense and who's that weirdo guy who plays Sean Harris mm. he is an incredible actor he's amazing he, you watch this film and you know he, he's known for playing creeps and weirdos mm. and you watch this and even though you know it you're still creeped out by him you go oh. he lives in the East London I used to bump into him at the he market. was the best bit about Mission Impossible 5 oh yeah is it oh, 5 yeah. uh, no uh, uh. Arm Reload no it wasn't that one no, he wasn't arm reload. Oh no, he's in it, but he's he'd <laughs> Fallout. He'd, Fallout is with um, Superman, who does the arm reload. Uh, Henry Cavill. No, the one before. He's in that, but he's he's in it very little. No, the one before where he's the the main baddie. Yeah. Okay. He just every time he's on screen, he's like Whoa. arm reloading it back to uh, assassins. Yeah. No, no, no. Is it right? Mm. <laughs> assassins. Assassins. I'm not doing. I'm not doing that. Okay. Yeah. So all right. So apart from so you've mentioned Killing Eve. You've mentioned Mr. Mr. In Mr. In Between. Barry. Barry's great. Barry, oh, have you Barry? heard of Barry? Barry's a US TV show about an ex assassin, ex hitman who. He's not, he's an ex US Marine. I oh, know, I, I thought he was a hitman as well. He's he, an ex US Marine, now he's a hitman, but now he wants to be an actor. And so he goes to these acting classes. He accidentally goes to acting, acting, acting classes, classes, yeah. classes, And he's balancing his life between having to still be a hitman for hire yeah. and also, you know, learning, training to be an actor. And it's... Um, it's very good. It's there's so a really... Fun. At the end of season one, there's a really good firefight in a warehouse with him and one other bloke clearing on their own. Really I listened to a thing recently. Um, again, it's not Hitman and Jason, but it is firearms on screen adjacent which is Michael Mann stuff mm. and Bill Hader who plays Barry was asking whilst he was recording Barry is like how do we make it feel like heat mm. and that's to do with sound design and basically utilising the sound that they, they capture on the day speaking of sound design the helicopter waiting, waiting on helicopters you are they are they for you or no not for me <laughs> not yet <laughs> And it was funny because uh, in order to get the, it to sound like it does in heat, is basically there's no treatment by a kind of sound mix uh, person on the back end. They are just they are capturing the sound as it happens mm. on the day, and it pisses off the sound people because they're like, oh, I need to do my job, mate. I can't just have what we caught on the day. But it's like, yeah, but it sounds great. But it does annoy me in films when you have the opposite and where they have a sound designer who doesn't necessarily know about guns has introduced a whole load of sounds that guns don't make. And um, or has has dialed down the sound or dialed up the sound. And or an MP5 sounds like an M60. Exactly. <laughs> or or when somebody. My personal favourite or personal. What's the opposite of a favourite? Least favourite is when somebody pulls up a gun and it goes shh shh, and then nothing moving. Or they put like a the hammer sound of a hammer being cocked when somebody has a Glock that doesn't have a hammer. Goes, you, didn't shh, you mention this on the last? Yeah, you mentioned you did. Probably. Yeah. It's, my, it's a bugbear of mine. I hate it. And but it's, the, the opposite of being a bugbear is that I go back and watch Michael mm. Mann movies because Michael Mann gets it. Mm. And I t actually, that's an interesting pivot. Michael Mann obviously shot Collateral, mm. which is an assassin film, he which is, does have yeah. some really cool stuff in it. And Sorry, just quickly. You're on X, aren't you? Uh, yes. Watch your handle. I'm just, I'm, uh, just, I'm just putting a, a post out oh, at, saying, at, tell me your favourite assassin. Oh, well, oh, oh, yeah, nice. That's cool. Do you a love, yeah. Alex Brockdorf. Oh, of course, it's your name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but of all the things, I do appreciate Collateral, and it's a great Hitman movie, but it's not... I know what I like out of a Hitman movie, and mm. I don't know about you. I was going to come on to this. Yeah, go on. My favourite Hitman movie or Hit People movie is Slow. Hit people. Whatever. Fuck off. <laughs> Jump off that cliff. <laughs> hit, hit them, they others. Um, I like it's a slow, time. methodical dude who's super competent doing a thing. It's, I mean. What's the latest one with Michael Fassbender? Uh, 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 killer. The Killer. What the did killer. you think of that? Okay, so we talked about this infinitum. Extensively. I, <laughs> we went to see it. Together. I love the first half hour. But I wish they didn't have the voiceover on the first half hour. 
I would have happily watched Michael Fassbender sitting in that room, getting bored, checking his heart rate, doing the groundwork, checking his weapon, without him having to tell the world about uh, what's going on in his head. Mm. I just want to watch a guy do a thing and do a thing well. Shall I, shall I tell you why Collateral, Collateral I love, but why it's not as fun to watch as others' films are? Collateral's with Tom Cruise, right? Collateral's with Tom. Tom Cruise. It's because you don't like Tom Cruise in that film. You're not wanting him to necessarily succeed. You are all it, about, you're focusing on Jamie Foxx. Because he's the Fox hero. getting out of it alive. Because he's the hero. Well, then you look at other films. Well... So, one of my favourite, favourite, favourite films about an assassin is Day of the Jackal. Of which course. We've, we've talked about. I've seen that for decades. Oh, it's brilliant. Well, not, we, we're not talking about the Jackal, which is the 90s. Day of the Jackal. The 1963 one. Day of the Jackal. Yeah. Um, yeah. You realise... 70s, I, was it? Not that, uh, yeah. 70s, I think. Yeah, yeah, 60s or 70s. As and, I, and I read the book before I saw the film. Throughout it, you are kind of disappointed when he doesn't succeed. At the end, you're like, uh, you, you, it's like he almost succeeds, and and you're you're kind of torn between whether he does or he does. What makes that the film so brilliant is is you're watching someone who's very very good at what they do, mm. do what they do impeccably, and then there's the kind of the French detective and the other people. That's the where the kind of chaos is. And you can see that they're chaotic in the way that they're doing their thing. And you can see this guy just like, I love that sequence with the watermelon. Especially mm. if you think about, we, we, at the beginning we were talking about quote unquote cool guns. The watermelon, that's the jackal. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the day of the jackal. No, both. The day of the jackal and the jackal. The day of the jackal. The so in the day of the jackal, if you rewind and it Jack a little Black. bit. <laughs> Jack Black's arm gets. <laughs> so um, Edward Fox knows, okay, I am going to take a shot at de Gaulle at a um, march somewhere in Paris. How do I get from where I start to my shooting position? And he decides that he needs to, and this is a cool thing, is that he, he uh, takes some gunpowder, which makes his um, cordite, skin ashen, cordite, cordite, yeah. skin ashen. And that's the sort of thing that you would have learned in the war. But then crucially, he gets this, and I'm going to bounce from this to another film, a bespoke gun maker to make him a sniper rifle that essentially can fit inside of a crutch. So when you see him in the office with but this you, gun but maker... you don't know this. That that's, that's what's great about this. Watching the film, you see him going to the gun maker and you see him giving him the specifications, but you don't know what his plan is. And it's only when oh, you see true. it at the end, you, you see it coming together. Like, oh my God, that's so well, smart. Well, that's yeah. like in the line of fire when he gets the plastic gun maker. Ah, we're going to yeah, come to that. Yeah. But yeah. You, speak, you mentioned something there, which is another problem with the uh, Trump assassination or the, the shooter, right? The first thing I thought when... I saw what had happened and the scenario was why on earth would you pick there to take a shot from? You're not escaping. You were not escaping that point. There was no way I you were getting away. I don't think he, he you no was way you were thinking away. about that. You have to be though, Bucks. But he was... No, no, no. Because no death by no, cop. Yeah. You know, he's, he's happy to do it. When somebody of that age is not... He's not being paid to go and do that. This, this is what, you know, all these conspiracies about he was paid by either the left wing to try to assassinate Trump or by the right wing to make Trump look good. It's bullshit. It's just a 20-year-old kid who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. At no point was he probably thinking about how am I going to get away from this? And as any good assassin or sniper would know, Hugh, presumably you think about your roots out? Well, that's yeah. exactly my point. Yeah. But that's what makes it more fishy bugs. Not if you, the, not if, if not got, if, if you, you got, don't. That bloke clearly wasn't thinking right. Why would you use a semi-automatic with iron sights? Well, why not something that's bolt action, much more accurate, higher, higher caliber? You know, that's just the gun he could get hold of. It was his dad's gun. You know, at no point, unlike the day of the jackal, at no point had the guy put any thought into this, which is why it's so so extraordinary that he managed to get to where he got to and take a shot. Bearing in mind, he probably didn't plan it. I mean, the stuff, just to kind of, on the on the Trump thing, that I was listening to someone talk about it, and they were talking about, um, you know how over the, the Olympics, they had these, um, a sea of drones that have lights on them, mm. so you can do a drone display. 
But just imagine that's a sea of FPV drones with a small explosive charge. Even with an ECM bubble up, if you're going to try and drop a public figure and you've got 40 FPV drones in the air that you can program to fly into a single point, that's going to A, work and probably B, happen at some point. It's too traceable. Now, if, if this does happen... Let's pray they didn't get the idea from this. <laughs> no, it's too, it's too traceable. It's too, it's too traceable. But again, if you've got this young boy idiot who's deciding that he's going to take a shot at Trump, he's not expecting to come off of that, the top of that rooftop. If no, you, if, which we. So if you are not, you, you, I'm, I'm, I am just, I'm considering all the possibilities. Right? Hmm. It's, you don't it's to to motivate someone to go and do something like that. Right? You're not paying them. It's, this isn't the cash. The incentive is otherwise. You've got a hold of them. You've got something over them, and or they've been in the manipulated over time. Okay, mm. so I think, or he's just a disaffected kid, and and and, and this is his one be. shot at immortality. He's always going to be known as the kid that took the shot at Trump. Correct, but if you if you were in that position like that, right, and you, let's say your let's say that is what your mental state is. You want your shot at fame, whatever. You don't have no digital footprints there oh, is a true. record of you trying to get attention some other way it's always going to be on social media if you've not got the ability to connect with people in the real world and you're a weirdo you're going to try and find it other ways there are digital breadcrumbs there always. are ways that you're trying to make it be it on some gaming platform be it on mm. facebook be it on x in a in a in a fake profile just being a complete troll they do it in other ways this is the thing with this guy this is why it's smelly there is nothing well, that's there the thing, is though, is that nothing. With, like, if we need to watch the Day of the Jackal, doesn't make sense at all. It kind of makes sense in a 1963 way. Mm. Like the way that he gets his passport is he goes to a uh, graveyard and finds a the, person yeah. that, that died around the same time that he was born. Mm. He then puts in a passport request, and this is like okay, could he you, fakes it's a stamp, the, it's the paperwork. Book, he fakes the birth certificate. Yeah, yeah, but that, that makes it. sense yeah. in a yeah. non-CCTV, non-online world. But how would, would you do that now? This is why it's so of- difficult. I, st- I started watching. Um, Day of the Jackal has just come through on a reply on, on, on the yes. HR WhatsApp group. Good. Well from done. Stu Hale. From Stu well Hale. done, Stu. Oh, nice. There That's are nice. many other replies you can go through in a bit. But yeah. <laughs> um, well, very, very, so, um, oh, you've completely derailed my train. <laughs> Sorry, mate. What was I about to say? Stu Hale did it. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, so, yeah. so I've just, just started watching, for the first time, Life on Mars. Oh yeah. oh yeah, uh, and the and I was reading something where somebody said it's so difficult to write a thriller at the moment, or in the last fifteen years, and it's getting harder because of CCTV, because of phones. You know, it's very difficult for people to get away with things and leave no trace. With the advent of social media and all the tracking that we have on our phones, it's getting even harder. Uh, and that's why it was so interesting watching something that's set in the nineteen seventies. And it's somebody who who is so used to current policing or current policing as it was then, because this was 2007, I think, going back 30 years and trying to apply those modern techniques which no longer exist to old school stuff and finding out that he can't. And this is why I I think James Bond as well, the older stuff is more satisfying. The more modern it is, the more modern gadgets, the more stuff they just explain away with... You know, this is an algorithm designed to do this. The more boring it gets, as you said, what you want to see is skill. You want to see people putting real thought into it rather than relying on a technical solution. Oh yeah, I'd, I'd always prefer mm. to watch a slow film. Like one of my favourite films within this genre is with George Clooney in it, called The American, mm. which is um, oh my god, it's directed by I someone know who's of it. also. I don't a, think I've seen. I've not seen it either, but it popped up recently. But it's based on a, a book by Bert, not Bernard Cornwall. He writes about sharp, um, sharp. But it's based on a kind of. It's very sexy. It's what I've said in you know. It's it's Italy and it's coffee and it's nespressos and guns and shit, which I love. <laughs> I was about to say that's right up your. Speech. But it starts off with George Clooney um, in a snowscape with his uh, lover, um, and he twigs that something's wrong. Uh, it turns out there's two guys that's trying to shoot him. He ends up just dropping his missus, which is bizarre. But then he has to he, kind of jump on. When you say dropping, like shoot her? Shoot, shoot her. And then he has to escape. Hi, George shoots his own missus? Yeah, it's bizarre. Okay. I, don't, I never understood that bit. But then he is just she, finds is, himself... Hold on. Sorry, but is 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 it because she's a traitor or... No, you never know. 
it's really oh. weird there's these two bad guys come at him he realises that he has to kind of uh, make himself non-exist so anyone that knows him has to disappear and he drops his missus which I find quite bizarre but he then ends up going to uh, I always remember it, Abruzzo which is this tiny little Italian town in the middle of nowhere good wine and he's got like this tiny shitty little Fiat but his job is that he makes bespoke guns for people that need them mm. and so he's got um, and one of the parts that I love is that he meets up with this um, very very sexy um uh, female hitman that comes in to say I need this this gun you could in that scenario you could say hit woman hit woman there we go hit woman hit, hit it's lady. descriptive isn't it hit but, lady, but right. she's, she's super cool and super talented and it's awesome but what I love about it hit mom oh hit mom <laughs> hit mom <laughs> hit mom <laughs> Some sort of school teacher, <laughs> hit mom. Assassin, gender neutral assassin. She comes in, but the bit that I love is that he then has to create this weapon to her specifications. And it's kind of like, it needs to fit into a, a briefcase. It needs to work up to 300 meters, blah, 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 blah. And he has to get bits like posted into him because he has to make it from scratch. Not like he can go to a gun store. And there's this part where he makes a suppressor out of like found machined parts and he's having to, he's doing the baffles and as he's kind of putting the baffles into place, he's having to time it with the clang of the, of the uh, village clock. It's like bong, douche, bong, douche. And he slowly but surely creates this weapon for her and they go out and they test it. And it's again, it's that dude who's really good at a thing, doing a thing really, really well. And then the rest of the story then kind of bleeds into it and it all goes a bit Pete Tong and then someone else is after him and then everything goes wrong. Um, but those are the films that I love with Hit, Hitman. Mm. The, it's the preparation leading up to it. Yeah, mm, that's The Jackal's the, good for that, isn't it? Oh, really so good for The Jackal's good for that. Because you, know, um, you know what's... Boss, who is it? Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Yeah. Well, the, ja the Jackal, believe it or not, is a remake of Dave the Dave Jackal, Jackal yeah. despite the yeah. fact that it's so polar opposite in terms of tone. Yeah. Um, there are some there are a couple of similarities but it goes completely like off the rails but that was like early 2000s and I think it's just Richard Ge yeah, Richard Gears in it as well oh, which you really. forget he's he's like this IRA but there were because that's, that's around the time right? his tail. Right, yeah. yeah and it, Rich Gears terrible I think before we were talking he's shit isn't he that sort of mid hamster time I think <laughs> no I like Richard Gear. really Oh, Pretty woman. No. He's not a good actor. American Gigolo. And his eyes are really slinty. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I like Richard Gere. I think he's right. <laughs> Never trust a man with tiny eyes. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, no, the ja the jackal is awful because it, it 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 it's the opposite of the day of the jackal, which is him being discreet and careful. And day of the jackal is is just too bombastic. He he builds like a an automated gun to put in the back of a, 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 a van. Yeah, but that's kind of cool. It is kind of cool, but it's very not it's Dave's Jackal. Yeah. No, but if you think, okay, it's 2005, how do you create a bespoke gun to do a bespoke job? Mm. You do it remotely on Wi-Fi. It's a 50 cal. It can go out to, I don't know, 1,500 meters. He doesn't even have to be on site to pull the trigger. I go, you kind of go, well, that's, yeah. that, that's kind of cool. In yeah, it, wor it works in a way. It works in that world that we were saying that it's difficult to get away with stuff because of phones and CCTV. But it's just, it's just not the same. It's just not, not as. It's not that. It's, it's not as classy. Okay, Shall so if I we've, if we've Jack got, if we've got mm. the uh, slow, very erudite, mm. cool dude doing cool stuff, slowly thing, you, that's on one side of the thing, right? The other side, you've got. Uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone and Antonio Banderas in 1995's Assassins <laughs> which Never is so it. shit I've not seen it in years but I don't remember it being particularly good but everything around <laughs> that time because you've got you've got things like El Mariachi which is, is that's amazing it's super cool it's yeah. like a, a dude carrying around his, his machine guns in his guitar case uh, that's you, Robert Rodriguez is yeah. first and then first you've got one, Sylvester yeah. Stallone had a whole run of it because he obviously did the Sharon Stone one um, I thought Sharon Stone was in Assa Assassins is she not? I think she did both also thank you for picking no, 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 the no, topic of a word that's really difficult for a man <laughs> with a stammer to say <laughs> how many S's are in that? <laughs> fucking hell don't play the victim bags no, no. <laughs> it's not it's not um, it's Renny Russo I think in, oh is it? yeah 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 um, sorry yeah go to your list what's right, uh, so uh, Alan Rankin or, uh, also said David Jackal right? so yeah. right, let's go through we can go through no oh hang on I was going to say something there. 
I can't remember what it was. <laughs> um, uh, right. First one is so favorite. Assa- I said favorite assassin films yeah. and TV series. First response is got to be Leon. <gasps> yeah. Now, now, yes, but Leon has become very controversial. Why? Why? Because Lolita kind of sketch. Well, not just that. So there are there are a couple of different cuts of it. There's the there's the US theatrical cut. There's and then there's a European cut which has got a lot more L- Lolita type scenes but we can just in it <gasps> worry about the wait no 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 it. but but the yeah but we just need to talk about this first so we can okay. get that out of the way before we can tell say how cool it is because if we don't then it sounds like we're ignoring it so luke besson um at the time uh or just before it was he i think he was mid-20s maybe late 20s dating like a 13 year old before this film was made. no it, yes L- look it up it, he Fuck ended up sake. marrying her. Why do they do this? Wait, he ended up marrying her. In Leon, she plays her sister, the one that gets shotgunned in the bathtub at the start. No! That's his wife. Oh, my God. So you've got a man who has a predilection for <sighs> young girls then making a film about a, a young girl trying to seduce an older man and flipping it. Um, but then what happens later is it worse. She got pregnant um, and he started doing Fifth Element. He... Woo! Guess yeah. who's in the Fifth Element, bitches? Yes! yes. My Andy! <laughs> she's aunt. She's aunt, of course. Um, and he dumps her and starts going out with Mila Djokovic instead. Dumps a... Wow. a I, th- I think, uh, if not pregnant, soon to give uh, a young child at 19. So Luc Besson... Bit of a shit bag. Right. Okay. Now we've got I, that out of the way. Art from artists. Yeah. Now we've got that out of the way. Let's talk about Leon. Okay, but yeah. you have to remind me about Colombiana after this. Okay. Yes, with Zoe Saldana. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Oh, I can't do it now. Why not? Fuck's sake. I will do it now quickly. Go on. Luke Hardy. Yes. Yeah, you know yeah, Luke, yeah, yeah, yeah. friend, yeah. right? And I know a few people listen Top to this. Top leg. Yeah. Right. Luke Hardy. Yeah. This is pre-Colombiana. Yeah. Comes back from Colombia. Yeah. Right. He meet. He told me this story firsthand mm. before Colombiana came out. Yeah, and he says, "Fucking hell, mate! I met this guy. I think it was on the plane. He met him. I'm like, yeah, a mad story. Um, basically, uh, had this missus who he didn't know was a hit woman. Right? I'm like, what? Yeah, and he was a journalist. She, she was a hit woman. He didn't know. She, he was working in Colum- Col- Col- He was living in Colombia. He go away. He go work around the world. Or he's a pho- photographer, maybe. And he would come back and yeah. And sometimes she'd turn up and he'd see her, and sometimes she wouldn't. He wouldn't know where he was going. It was like really weird relationship. But they, mm. he was in love with her and all that, right? Yeah. Turns out she was a hit woman. And um, basically, when she was young, her her dad got killed because her dad was a hitman or cartel. Her dad got killed, and when she was young, she vowed to kill the people who killed the guy who killed the who killed her dad right and she learned this is before the film even yeah. was made and she learned to be an assassin became an assassin and went to try and kill the people who killed the dad mm. right Colombiana is the story Luke met the fella because have you do you remember the film yeah this actual true in the film except in the film she gets the guy who killed her dad. Yeah. In real life, that's not what happened. Ooh. In real life, she was captured by the cartel and they fucking stoned her to death. Oh, that's, and, that's a less of a and Hollywood the, ending. And the photographer yeah. boyfriend only found out about her secret life oh, after yeah. she'd been stoned to death. Holy she shit. disappeared and then he saw about it in the paper. He's like, what the fuck? How mad is that? Ask Luke about that. Yeah. So is, is Columbiana based on her? Is yeah. It, or is it just is complete? A, Columbiana is based on a true story and Luke yeah. met the, the boyfriend of the actual assassin. Holy shit. Before it was ever made. Anyway, <laughs> Leon. I, had to, I just sorry, remember yeah. that. Sorry, sorry. That's sorry. so cool. Right, Leon. Uh, the best, my favourite thing about Leon yeah. is Gary Oldman. Yeah. He's brilliant. Unbelievable. He's, he, there's, there's a meme I've sent you Bring the meme a everyone. few times. Everyone! No, the meme, the meme is it, it, it's it's a picture from Leon. It's when he swallowed the pill. Swallows yeah. the pill. He's like this, and it is um, uh, Gary Oldman is such a good actor that it's something like he, uh, during the, the, this scene he didn't even know he was Gary Oldman or something like that. He's like like the director yelled cut and had to remind him he's Gary Oldman. I can't remember it, but it's it's a, it's did a great. Did he used movie. to be a method actor then? Did he? 
I don't. I don't you're know. Not anymore. I don't it wasn't know. You can't. Slow it's, horses. it's difficult to tell. Um, if somebody doesn't come out and say it, like Daniel Day Lewis, it's difficult to to tell if somebody's a, me- a method actor or not because you don't see what's happening behind the scenes. Jason Bourne. Ooh, is he a hitman? Is he a hitman? Yes, he's, he's an a hitman. He's an assassin. I love. He's an asset. <laughs> you put you put a very strong emphasis on ass there for no reason. He's an asset. He's an I asset. can't stand uh, uh, Matt Damon as an actor. You, uh, yeah, like we, we had this thing. We, we were talking about The Martian, and I you were accept, like, I accept you, uh, him yeah. in The Martian. That's it. You accept Everything him in The Martian. I accept him in the very first Bourne film as well. Really? What's yeah, your What's your beef with him? He's he just a piece of wood, mate. Really? Just, yeah, I, I think he's rubbish. I do. I think it's terrible. I don't agree with you. I, 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 think, I he, think he's quite good fun. I love him in Dogma. He's he's Dogma. I forgot about that. Dogma. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a film that's very difficult to find nowadays because um, it's not on any streaming. That's platforms. a Kevin Smith movie, isn't it? It is, but it's um, it's all tied up with Weinstein. It's a. Uh, it's, uh, so I don't know. I don't know if they'll ever. But but yeah. Bourne mm. did. Bourne was great for cinema in general. Uh, Could just can we go back to Leon first? Yeah, 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 we, yeah we skipped yeah. over Leon, then come back to Bourne. So Leon, there are again some brilliant scenes in it. There are some some of those sort of settings up, some of those calculated things that he's doing, um, and those are the most fun of it, fun bits of it. I I really enjoy the bits where it's sort of you think with, when when he's training her, and there's the jogger in the park. And you think he's about to shoot the jogger, and it turns out to be a paintball oh, yeah. gun. Things like that. They're, they're, I quite like the, those. No, bits. it's the politician. Is he it's politician? It's a politician yeah. running with a politician yeah. running through. He's got guards. He's got two, but, yeah, two yeah, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, but it is, it is. You're right. It's Gary Oldman being, and it's that last shootout. It's that. Is that mm. bit where they're in the um, they the police assault his flat? It's the bring everyone bit. But the weapons tactics in that are dreadful by the by the police. The yeah, but that's police. a period of time where mm. I think that was influenced a lot by the old John Woo movies. Yeah, which is less so about let's make it realistic. It's a yeah. it's Chow Yun Fat with two Berettas. No, that, that no no that's not a problem. The stylized stuff that Leon's doing is not a problem. It's what the police are doing is is dreadful. It's that like yeah. they're coming around the corner in like a big old blob of people and yeah that into, in yeah. almost every single one don't it? yeah, yeah it's but it's there must have been a time when it got a bit more tactical but like mm. even when you watch um, Die Hard and they've got the SWAT guys coming in it's hardly like super ninja <laughs> <laughs> well even just yeah. got, I know I mentioned oh, but even on the slow horses there's, a, couple, mm. there's a, a scene on there where actually it was the day Oldman who was my favourite actor I didn't mm. know I, I, he was going to be on it and I'm with him in a scene I'm not speaking but I'm literally with him within a couple of yards of this, of this particular scene mm. and it's the day he got nominated for an Oscar this is mm. so two years ago what, what did he get nominated for? he'd been nominated a bunch of times this is the Dark last time he got nominated and he won oh no no it's the day he won it's the day he got announced as a winner I think or was it he? no what, nomination must have been what was Darkest Star, I think what was it? The Darkest Hour? Playing a church. Oh, it may have been Darkest Hour. Yeah. Anyway, there's a scene there. He, in in this episode, he rocks up to, I think it's the MI5 uh, building, or maybe like, whatever, anyway, Secret Services building, a security services building, and gets to the barrier, more or less almost rams it, and the, the police come around the corner, go, <laughs> like, quick reaction onto it, and they all basically jump they go in front of the physical barrier that stopped the vehicle. So they're between the vehicle and the physical barrier there with the weapons on the car. Mm. And we were talking to the director. I said, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. It's like a nightmare. Mm. And, I, and he said, why? He was a mega director. And he explained why. Mm. He said, okay. He went, yeah, fuck that. It's no good for camera. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> we're doing it the that, bad way. Well, that, <laughs> well, that's it. But that, no, that's fine. It's when it's, it, it's absolutely fine. I've got no problem. Bear in mind, this is most of my job is telling people that's not quite how it's done. But it is. It is. It, it's absolutely fine if somebody knows that and goes, "Yep, understand that." However, yeah. for the camera angle, for this, for the shot, we're going to do this. That's absolutely fine. What is what is annoying is when somebody doesn't know that and they just put something together and they don't all ask, the time. and they don't ask, and, and so it may end up looking exactly the same. 
but one of them involves me not being paid one of them involves me being paid no that's not why I care it's just it's, it is it is knowing the mistakes that you're making and nothing in TV or film is 100% accurate there will always be tweaks mm. depending on budget time what's in the story but you know it is it is it is much more frustrating when nobody bothers to check Al Rankin says his favourite female assassin mm. is Xenia on a top. Oh, from Goldeneye. <laughs> from Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Killing, is killing she people, an assassin? Killing oh, yeah. people while they're having sex. She's a KGB yeah. asset. I can't breathe. <laughs> you said asset again. Who's your yeah. favourite female assassin? Do you the have- Femme Nikita is like the, is, is 1980s, mm. 90s. They remade it as well, they remade that. But she's quite yeah. bombastic. I guess I guess it's the kind of what would be the Day of the Jackal style female assassin, you know, kind of slow, methodical, really good at what she does. Well, Salt is pretty good. I was What's about that? to say, mm. Angelina Jolie in yeah. the Smith film, Mr. and M- M- Mrs. Smith. I quite like. I, I really like that I movie. like that film. I, I recently, because um, we were watching uh, the Apple TV show, mm. which is is fine, but they're not very good at what they do throughout it they're just bumbling through as like, i and again going back to what we were saying i really enjoy watching good people doing stuff well so i went back and rewatched the second half of it or it, the it was the house fight it was the the bit where they both realize who the other one is yeah. and they have the fight in the house and then the house is attacked and i rewatched that bit and it's so much fun and going back to what I said last time, like late 90s, early noughties, was the best time for these kind of films that were big enough budget, big enough stars, enjoyable enough to watch, rather than... Well, yeah, but there's something... I think when you go in smaller budget and you're trying mm. to switch things up and not make it bombastic craziness, that that forces a level of quality you otherwise wouldn't get. No, prime, example is, mm. prime example, I should be putting the group chat here by a few people, is No Country for Old Men. Yeah, I can't imagine that was the biggest budget in the world. But holy no, shit, what not. a film! A- assassin movie. What an assassin! What an assassin! Mm. He's an assassin, isn't he? But that's like, he is a, it is. But like for me, that that's one of my favourite films. It's the that. character work of yeah. Anton Chigurh more than the way that he does it. Mm-hmm. He's just cold, just cold. I have a, even the weapons he uses are ridiculous. I have just a, like I yeah, don't care. I have a weapons bugbear with that and it's the what? the Why? shotgun silencer. Oh yeah. Uh, and then he pulls the shower curtain across um to stop him getting yeah, but stylistically on that's pretty cool. I know, but it's like a shotgun is not going to be silenced and it's like pew pew it's like he's shooting people in public and it's pew. It's I'm like, I'm yeah, less it's, angry it's with just, movies that make those sorts of calls. Mm to make the tone of it work in mm. a really good way. But it was much cooler, the, the sort of compressed gun, compressed air gun he's got. That's he, cold. That's cold as fuck. That's but it's cold. also, it's, it's, that is quiet. But of a similar vein then, mm. Benicio Del Toro's character in Sicario. <sighs> Sicario. Oh my what God. What a movie. What a movie, what Sicario. A movie. Oh, Especially oh my the, God. The, from the Brilliant. point at which they No go. one has said that in the in, in any of the responses. Well, it's because it, it's not a hitman film. Apart really. from yes. Yes. Apart from the end. Like, yeah. Benicio Del Toro is a hitman. It's entirely hitman film. The whole film is to get in there. Yeah. The yeah. whole film is to get yeah. the hitman into the cartel True. leader's house. I I l- what a film Emily Blunt as well yeah she's brilliant Aww. in it there are, there, are, there are a couple of things I love about the film number one is the the shootout at the checkpoint the, um, yeah. oh, the yeah. on the way out at the start uh, it's the second big scene that when I describe to people what it's like when you're you're in a war zone and something's about to go down you don't know what it is but the atmospherics start to get weird absence of the normal and presence, absence of, the normal abnormal. presence of the abnormal that's, exactly that's that. all down to the director though yeah because it's not just about the tactics of what's happening mm. in the thing you'll what you'll find is that the soundscape and the way that they've done the music starts from when they go into Mexico yeah. it's not just that last bit so yeah. it's the whole bit as gets they go into dark. yeah it gets real dark yeah. into Mexico they get 
back up with the federal it just gets, to do the thing. It gets cranked up. Well, to your point in that scene, yeah. I hadn't realised, thought about it, but yeah, yeah the yeah. hairs in your back of your neck yeah. stand up before anything has happened. Exactly. And that's you, the music. And, you, and you, it's, yeah, it's everything. It's the music. It's the way that they're driving. It's everybody becomes more tense. Everybody, everybody sat in those vehicles knows something's about to and go equally, down. And equally, it's not like people are talking about it with exposition. No. It's people eyes looking. Yeah, yeah. It's all in music. the action. And you know they've got nowhere to go. They're yeah. in one big traffic jump. There's they nowhere are. to go. They've got to deal with it. And you and the, is that that moment when they're stuck and they're like, it's gonna go, it's gonna go bad, it's gonna go bad, and it goes bad. But that's I love that scene. It's such a well done scene. But that also happens to in Sicario too. Not as well though. Not as well, yeah. but the way that it happens in Sicario too is that the same sort of situation is happening. But Josh Brolin's character realises that if he has to make the choice that he's about to make, it's going to change the game completely. To go noisy. To go mm. noisy. But it's not just go noisy. He also, he's been told to clear the area mm. of anyone. And there's yep. also this young girl and he decides not to. He says, look, I've, I've been operating what's in this, this. What's this, sorry? Sicario 2. I think I saw it. I think I was drunk when I watched it. I, I remember it it's being not, not very as good. good, but there's some no. good moments. In it? It's, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, a shame because it, it is it is still a really good film. Is it? But it's just not as good as Sicario. The the other the other thing I love is 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 the guy the guy with glasses yeah. and the moustache. He's a, he's based on a real. I can't dude. remember his name, but again, it's what, a in meme. the second film. No, in the first in the one. first one. Uh, is he in the second one as well? He I is in the second one. I can't remember his name. Glasses. He's got he's got thick black glasses and a big old moustache. He was based. He he looks like a nerd. Yeah, he's one of the he, operators. But yeah, he's he's yeah. based on a real like operator from I guess the nineties. Right. Who was you know clanging yeah, and banging with the best? There's of them. A, there's like three or four CIA guys that look exactly like that. Yeah. He's got like buttoned up shirt, pens yeah. in the pockets, and the but meme is the meme. The steel. meme is if somebody dressed like this turns up, you are fucked because <laughs> this guy is this guy's the the guy, and yeah, it's it's great because he doesn't look like your classic operator but he looks like every CIA spook Dave Davis has yeah. put in response Blade Runner that's not a sassy movie no it depends on your interpretation of it um, oh well kind of hang he on is, a minute he's a he's, 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 he's assassin movie kinda, yeah. yeah he's well, killing the replicants well yes and no an assassin movie a hitman movie I would suggest is somebody doing it on the wrong side of the law somebody doing it discreetly he is more of a uh, more applicator of, a, of the law. Yeah, he's more of a sort of a, what would you call it? But hang on, like like when they had the Nazi Matt hunters. Damon, J- Jason Bourne is on the right side of the law. Well, no, he's not because he's on working the right with, side of the government. Well, no, he's not. He's in the right side of his government own chasing perception. the government are chasing him, but only after he fucks it up. When but he's also, as an assassin, you, he's employed right, by the government. He's not. Treadstone is a is a CIA black books thing. It's off. So CIA, the CIA are trying CIA. to no because the CIA are trying to shut Treadstone down as well. So it's it's not I, that simple. I'm struggling mm. with the definition of assassin here being wrong side of the law. Well, I think that's wrong because an assassin has to sneak in, has to do things. As we said, it's all about. Why is that, no, 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 why does that necessarily have to be wrong no, side okay, of the law? You've got though. assassin and a sniper. So they might be, if you look at, think about it from a film perspective, they're kind of doing the same thing. You've got one guy shooting a rifle, another guy shooting a rifle. One's operating under the remit of a government, i.e. the sniper, because they're in a place where they have to do a thing. An assassin, um, I guess... Sniper's military. But that's what I mean. You're, necessarily. Kind of, you're, you're operating in an environment where you're doing your job. An assassin, if you just say the term, what does the term mean to you? It means that I am being paid by someone else to take the life of someone else. Is Not, Blade Runner an assassin movie? Not technically, I can see but I can why, see I can see he, why he said that because he's taking people out. I can see why he said that, but I wouldn't. Yeah. But then I you can say that about any cowboy movie ever. They're not exactly assassins. If he's taking Are there people any out, cowboy assassins. Is there any like a cowboy hitman film? Because that'd, that'd be cool. cool. Oh, they were bounty really hunters. Cool. They were bounty hunters. Bounty yeah, hunters, true. Yeah. But then you see, there's a few movies but where dead you, or alive, they're not necessarily killing. Them. <laughs> I think we're yeah. We're, we're, we need to rein dead or alive. Red Sparrow. Oh, is yeah. that the? That's the. Um, that's. Uh, uh, oh God, what's her yeah, name? Yeah, her Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Is she an assassin? Oh, no, she's not. Yeah. She's a. She's like a, a mole. She's like a spy. She's not. I can't remember if she's an assassin or not. I don't. They were she, Russian assassins. They're, they're trained assassin? to to not does feel. Does she assassin and, somebody? I guess she assassins <laughs> someone. <laughs> um, that's an all right film. 
it was it, it gets very very interesting when they're doing the training the assassins okay training. so yeah. what about them uh, mm. a slightly lesser known one yeah in bruges <gasps> great in bruges Madonna. brilliant i Malcolm, yes, that Malcolm is Johnston threw that one in. Yeah. In Bruges, In Bruges is one of my favourite films because it is so, and I cry, blubbing at the end of it when he jumps off the tower. Apologies for nobody that sees it, seen it, but I when, hated it the first time I watched it. Oh uh, yeah, and I re, I think I, I got halfway mm. in, half an hour in. I was like, fuck this, don't like it. And but it's thought, a Martin McDonough movie. Like, yeah. you can go and watch. And it, his people other were films. banging on about it then, yeah. and I thought, okay, let's let's watch it the different thought like, actually I love Ray him. Fiennes though when Enjoyed he turns it. up it's a what a Malcolm McDowell movie McDonough McDonough Malcolm he's, McDonough. he's, McDonough. he's, McDonough. he's a, a writer director he does a lot of um, theatre stuff uh, and he also did what was the most recent one he's done with those two in it again with both of them um, the Irish one it's all about Ireland oh God. the the Banshees of Inishirin. Ban- Banshees of Inishirin. Inishirin, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Have you seen that? I, no, I've not. I, I need I to. Was, Is it? Yeah. I didn't enjoy it as much. What? But it's um, it's it's in. I uh, yeah. I, we need to do an Irish movies episode just so I can gobble but I, that. But I, th- but I think that Talking I... Talking of yeah. Irish movies, have you seen the trailer for um, the? Oh my god, it's about the hit the young guys rapping, but it's in the Irish language. Oh yeah. Like the, the whole thing. Yeah. We, we saw it the other day when we were went to it's, Twisters. I can't remember. It's got a name, something like uh, it's Tomcat or Wildcat n- or something. No, no it's um, it's like Knuckle Dusters or what is it? Like but it's Irish Hunch language Drunk. and it's got Michael Fassbender in it from oh, from is it? Um, the Hitman. But it's all in the Irish language and it's about them mm. growing up in, in in that period and then becoming. But in but in Bruges, I love. But it's got, it's it, I wouldn't call it a Hitman. Yes, they are both both Hitmen. But it's not about, in the traditional sense of a hitman film, what we're talking about, which is somebody attacking a target. This is sort of post that. They're they're more gangsters than they are hitmen, and then they're not a they're not tracking a target or preparing for a hitman. Yeah, they, 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 they are like hitmen. They're they assassins. Are, they're just yeah. not that professional. Yes, but I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a, a they, yes they are hitmen, but I wouldn't call it a hitman film. But I love that film. I Have you such ever, a good film? Ooh, but I, just wait, 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 wait before. <laughs> but I, what I love about In Bruges is the gun stuff is is really top notch. For instance, there's a bit where he shoots somebody in the face with uh, a blank. And um, he, he deafens him and scars oh, yeah. him. He's, but he, he's a very yeah. accurate representation of what a blank would do. Okay. Yep, Here's sorry. one for you. Go on. Under the radar. Have you ever heard of a film called Kill List? Yes. I, yeah. Ben Wheatley. Ben yeah. Wheatley. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like not known by anyone. No, I've but only we, ever heard of ben, two people ben mentioned Wheatley's it. One a, of them a, a great British director. And it's yeah. also You've both got, seen it? Yeah, I it, haven't. I need to watch it. Okay, so I need it's, to watch it's, it, yeah. it, uh, don't spoil it for me because it's on my. The most, is, the it most is horrific ending. ending. The most horrific. It's ending. Michael Smiley and oh, is it Neil? Neil, Neil Ma- Ma- Maskell, yeah. Michael Smiley. Yeah. What's it available at the minute? I need to describe it for people. people I think it's actually it. on Amazon. I think you can is get it, it on Amazon. I've, I've got it. Again. I've got it on Blu-ray. My cousin mentioned your Irish cousin actually, Steve. But Neil me. Maskell had he's so good at just being direct and vicious and there's do you remember the scene <laughs> with, no it doesn't ruin it anyway well, no, I, I will yeah it's just it's a scene when before the stuff really happens mm. they're in a hotel and it's breakfast and it's I Michael Smiley and um, Neil Maskell just having breakfast and like deep in the background of these bunch of kind of um Christian dudes who are talking about what they're talking about and it's like oh is it time for a is it time for a let's play a song oh really shall I get the guitar out oh yes that's fine <laughs> and Michael Smiley kind of turns around and says like and if they play that fucking thing I'm gonna fucking ram it down the neck and then obviously it goes that direction and it's just mm. magic so kill list for people I, people should yeah. I'll, I'll so, higher level it for you mm. it is too it's like in Bruges they're two low level budget hitmen one of they both the one's Irish and one's English, and uh, one of them is ex ex army, and uh, like one of them's got relationship dramas, money, and they've been doing it before, and then they've knocked it on the head, and they get out, and then like, one of them comes back and it's like, yeah, if I was doing the job, actually, yeah, I need the money, but I said I'd never do it again. Let's not tell the missus, not that, and they and they do this job, and one job turns into another, turns into another, for all for the same client, and as they're going through these hits on these people, things start to get weird like 
this things are not right and they're going what and as the film and you know Mm. something's not right and as it goes on and builds and builds and builds you find out why it's fucking weird do you remember the end scene I'm not going to go through it the end scene is one of the most uncomfortable scenes I've ever watched I think I know I think I know the twist I think I read the twist which is why I've not watched it because I've been trying to give as much distance to forget the Ben really is so good at that like Field in England and things Mm. like that you know that's his Mm. yeah um I, then he, he does the Meg 2 which is great did Ben Wheatley do the Meg 2? Ben, ben Wheatley um, the Meg all, 2 the Meg 2 yeah but he's also a, a comic book guy and he's just he developed this comic book which was really cool but he's a fan I think the guy that illustrated the comic book I used to read comic books as a kid and I used to grow up on 2000 AD do you mm. remember that? oh yeah you know Judge Dredd the original yeah. and there's there's one in that that I love um, Nikolai Dante who I would I would love to watch that you know become a become a TV show but if anyone's going to do it, Ben Wheatley should do it. Um, okay, Kill Bill. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with that? But I, Tarantino. I, apart from, I really like um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but for me, Tarantino ends with Jackie Brown. What? Well, what came after Jackie Brown? Kill Bill. What's wrong with that? It's a, it's a, it's a different kind of movie. I think it's the, t- it's not the alternative ending. The alternative ending or t- alternative historical ending was, um, Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious Bastards, which I love. But in terms <laughs> of when I think about um, Quentin Tarantino, for me, my my favorite is is um, Jackie Brown's very it's underrated. Brown. It's, so, I, I remember seeing it as a kid and not really understanding it and not really liking it as much a as guy I grew up with I need to ask you guys you guys might know a mm. guy I grew up with and w- when Jackie Brown came out with Bang and I like, we were in college together I think we were in college when that came out and he said to me I know I've not spoken to him since college-ish and he said to me that the character that Michael Keaton plays in Jackie Brown yes there is a spin-off film where Michael Keaton plays the same character it's in a spin-off not, film. It's not a spin-off. It's, it's, a, it's a, 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 Out of Sight. So Out of Sight was... Um, George Clooney. George Clooney. That was a great I've seen that. That's Jennifer, J-Lo. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, Lowe. Yeah. yeah, Lopez, thank you. Yeah, Jennifer yeah. Lowe. Uh, and he plays her... She's boyfriend an asset. In that. Huh. <laughs> That's the film, is it? That's the film. And oh, he, he's, right. it's not a spin-off. He just happens to play Similar the same person in two films. Right. But I seem to remember, I think it's because they're both based off books written by the same guy. I'd have to double check that. Okay. So Jackie Brown was originally, it's not called Jackie Brown. It's, some, it's called Jackie White or something like that. It was the original book that Tarantino based J- Jackie Brown on and the character is in both of that and that out of sight as well I okay think, we've I got fo- so Kill Bill came from Dave Davis has Easy anyone out. said killing them softly uh, but no but go on Kill just quickly Kill Bill Kill Bill was interesting because um, it was it was supposed to be one film but then he, he shot way too much and, and split it into two I quite like Kill Bill. I don't hate it. Yeah. I just for me, I love early Quentin Tarantino. I yeah. just think it's it's just a, it's a step change. Is is she no? Because they are they are all they're, all, assa- they're, they're all, all assassins. Yeah. They're all assassins, aren't they? Yeah. It's we it's it's again going back to your traditional hitman film of somebody taking on a target. That's that's more like a we- a western. Where somebody's getting revenge. Well, mm-hmm. no, that, the the two the two films are very interesting because they are the tone of them. The first one is very much like a samurai R- Rashomon type film about revenge in the East, and then the second one is more about the West. It's like a like a cowboy film, and he's managed to segue them together, which is quite smart. Mm. But um, there's a whole, again, it's not yeah, there's a whole it's not, heap of it's not your traditional assassin film of going to prepping to kill somebody that sort of stuff it's re- it is a re- revenge flick Killing Me Softly Killing Me Softly um, is kind of not that well known but I really like it it's got Brad Pitt in it I love Brad Pitt he plays a wicked hitman who's just cool as beans um, it's also got a um, is it recent? Oh, I don't know, 2008 2009 James Gandolfini um, kind of dark wet Chicago area um, and I can't remember the last line, but it's a, from Brad Pitt. I got um, the toilet. Back in a sec. All right. Cool. And Brad Pitt is, you know, the kind of lines of like, 
America's not the something, something, something. It's a business. Now pay me my fucking money. Which is so good. And there's just this sequence where he basically beats someone up, but it, you know, he walks into a, a house and the camera starts outside of the house. And you just see him like just rampaging inside the house and he comes out the house. But it's got a um, young Ben Mendelsohn in it who mm. ben, I just adore Ben Mendelsohn. And if people aren't he's aware Australian. of him, he's Australian. He's mm. also in Animal Kingdom, which we talked about earlier. Mm. Um, y- you know, Ben Mendelsohn is just placed beyond the pines. He's got this kind of feral twitchiness which is just absolutely magic to watch she did a TV show called Bloodline as well there was there was something that popped into my head you were saying something earlier and it made me think of a, something we've not talked about like a hitman shit hitman movies <laughs> well we, we we when he gets back from the toilet we'll talk about um, the Richard Linklater one was that was that called Hitman Hitman yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing yeah. about Hitman no, but it had some... The, the thing I liked mm. about Hitman um, was it was Glenn Powell kind of making characters that weren't who mm. he is in order but to they, kind of... But they were all who, who he... The character that he wasn't was the lecturer. All, all, of the, all of the ones were actually Glenn Powell. But then and that's kind of cool in a way when, you know, people who want to escape their own... Mm. Here's one for you, actually. He's not a Hitman. But it is in the world of living a life. Mm. True Lies, man. Does True Lies count? I love True Lies. Well, let's let's speak to Hugh when he he gets back. Oh, we can segue from um, the one where he is a hitman uh, with the with the gas gun. What's the gas gun? What's the eraser? Um, eraser. You've been erased. <laughs> You've been erased. I remember uh, that, going. I that remember was that was sort of halfway between Schwarzenegger that, that. and um, who's the director that talks like this. Oh, Werner Herzog. Ven, Werner Herzog. Yeah, yeah, that was halfway between Schwarzenegger and Herzog. That reminds me as a kid, though, of... <laughs> it is inevitable. Um, old video shops. Because mm. when I was a kid, for some reason, we never had a, a TV until, you know, growing up at all. And I remember um, running the numbers on my, one of my first jobs uh, until I could afford a uh, £59.99, 14-inch Hitachi combo VHS TV player uh, you know, whatever yeah. and I used to hide it in my cupboard at home oh were you, so you actually weren't weren't allowed a TV weren't allowed a TV oh, wow. uh, oh, they had a TV but it was like um, it was fucking weird it was black and white it was whatever yeah. I don't know why it was a, a parental choice anyway I got this TV um, and it was the integrated VHS one and it was in my cupboard and obviously I started working when I was 15 you know earning my way and I was obsessed with films then and this is when there was a DVD VHS rental place in Truro where I grew up and I got on really really well with the guys that ran these um, rental shops and they used to have little bargain bins mm. so you'd have this, the, the, the stuff that you would rent but they knew I was into films have you tried this have you tried that and it always used to cost two quid and I got really into Charles Bronson as a young kid <gasps> Death it's kind of Death Wish but the one I always remember is this one called Telephone and it was a kind of Manchurian Candidate rip off that's been mentioned in the chat actually Manchurian Candidate yeah okay so I was basically saying um, to Bags how I um, got a a TV player VHS integrated thing when I was a kid and I basically used to get these budget VHS tapes Mm -hmm. movies that you just never hear of nowadays and a lot of it included like the original um, Death Wish um, Three Days of the Condor um not a great one but like Telephone is basically like the Manchurian Candidate where um, a, a Russian asset has been trained that if he gets a phone call uh, that says the certain words then he will then go and assassinate someone and be activated but there is so many great like the original Man on Fire with them, oh, yeah. uh, Glenn watched that a few the months ago the original Man on Fire the original 1987 the Denzel one's a remake yes yeah, I yeah. didn't know that I didn't know that either Oh yeah, the 1987 one's great. Who's, really? Who's, yeah. who's in that? Glenn. Oh god. I'm gonna um, look it up. I'm gonna look it up. You look it up. But it's um, he's like this disillusioned Vietnam vet, mm. and I can't remember where it's set. It might also have a young Joe Pesci in it, who's really, really, really good. But it's the same vibe. It's kind of a, a Vietnam vet. I think they're in Italy. Um, is tasked with looking after this young girl, 
Um, Scott Glenn. Scott Glenn. Scott Glenn, yeah. Scott no Glenn. way! Yeah, man. And there's, there's a, a real rich history of kind of slightly shit movies from the 1980s and uh, early 90s. Mm. Um, that are so much fun to go back and rewatch. Do you do you think that shit films from the eighties and nineties are <sighs> better than the shit films of today? Yes, mm. because it's just nostalgic more than anything else. Like I used to, I used to really watch loads of Hulk Hogan movies when I was a kid. Hulk Hogan did movies. I think it was called something. Pa- something in yeah. paradise yeah, the, old, the wrestler the old fucking did it mate did what? oh yeah but there was something yeah. I remember I remember Tropic, like, Tropic th- something paradise and he had this power boat and it was in like Miami and it was so mm. shit but it, for some reason I got really into it and I just loved watching these crap films like Airwolf things like that oh Go hang on. on hang on so Disney the original Manchurian candidate is what got put yeah in that's in a classic too. okay so just coming back so we were talking about Kill Bill and Tarantino also putting you as an assassin film Pulp Fiction yeah I mean Jules number one are they assassins yeah yeah they're hitmen well they're gangsters they're, they're, they're sort of I think that, that's like I suppose again, they're yeah. not because a hit well okay they're all an rounded. assassin they're all an rounded, assassin they? is, is the multi-skilled engineers do you know who the yeah. coolest person is in that movie there Harvey Keitel oh Mr. 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 Wolf. Mr. Wolf. Yes, but he has no. undermined that by doing those adverts. I don't care. What mm. adverts? Oh, yeah. Like for car insurance. But there's actually a new movie coming out called Wolves with Brad Pitt and George Clooney, yeah. which is they're playing a version of him. But yeah, yeah but Jules, I mean, that is, it's a quintessential line. What I don't understand is why he's in black tie and it's like 10 in the morning. Hit That's I've never have, been. You know, you've he's not. Well. He's Gangsters. not a hitman. He's a. He's a. A sort. Of, he's a fixer. A gangster. Um, but yeah. So go. So what? So what is? What is a hitman? A hitman. Because yes, they could be described as a hitman, but they're they're more goons for hire. They're more thugs. Uh, yeah, I think assassin a hitman, hitman is that is your specific task. Mm. That is what you do, and it is a contractor, contract killer. Talking of the contractor. Have either of you seen The Contractor? That was... is Which one's the one with Ben Affleck? It, no, this is with Chris That's Pine. That's the accountant. That's the one that I remembered that okay. I forgot. I want Can to talk we, about yeah. The Contractor He's not really an briefly. He's the accountant. accountant. I, have you seen it? Yeah. No, he, he he's he's an assassin as well. No, he's just good at killing people. <laughs> <laughs> he's an accountant. <laughs> yeah, but he's an assassin on the side. That's not, that's not the whole point of the film. No! I, just, I, just, I, just, I love his air, Airstream trailer. No, no, but I want to... no, he's an accountant. He's an accountant. Yeah, I know he's an accountant because it's called The Accountant and he does that, but he's also a hitman on the side. It's like three films crammed into one. It's ridiculous. Right. It takes like a two-thirds, like two-thirds of the way through, like they introduce another person that is I'll suddenly talk, the I'll lead. Tell, I'll, anyway, to get back yeah. on track, away from crap hitmen... There is a film that Chris Pine did that kind of came out last year, I think. Oh, I lost this- all respect for Chris Pine when he started putting shit in his lips. What? what? He started pumping his lips full of did shit. Did he? Mm. Yeah. I think he's a dude. I, I don't give a shit what he puts uh, in his right. lips. Men who make their lips look fatter... No, no I get it. ...by injecting them are not dudes. No, I get it. I think he looks like... Um, the puppet film. Um, Team M- M- America. Yes. World Police. He yes. looks like Gary from Team America. <laughs> he does, yeah, World yeah, Police. He does, yeah. Specifically the one where he's sick in the, uh, the alleyway. I yeah. always think of Chris Pine. So Chris Pine filmed yeah. one? What was it? So there's Hans? a film called The Contractor and I think um, a I like ODA guy this. did the um, I feel like I've seen this. advice on it. But the first... What's ODA? Uh, Delta. ODA Detachment Delta, whatever their team names are. Um operational detachment alpha whatever it is um the first like 50 minutes is pitch perfect so the first little bit he's basically coming out of the oda teams uh and basically he's broken he's kind of taking multiple painkillers blah 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 he he gets shuffled off um he's pissed off he leaves and then he basically gets hooked up with ben foster our favourite Ben Foster he's a really good actor who's basically running um, contracting gigs in Europe Ben Foster um, is in Hell uh, High Water what's the Leave No Trace what's the one with the four seals trapped on the ma- the mountainside um, Lone Survivor oh okay. yeah. Right, yeah but he's, a, he's probably I'd argue one of the best actors working today um, Ben Foster Ben Foster yeah. Google him hang on um, go on yeah go on 
but when they go to Germany, the uh, this is what I really appreciate about the the contractor, and this comes back to Day of the Jackal is the trade craft. Mm. So they come in and talking about working in an environment that has CCTV and all that sort of stuff. This is included. So they are watching this um, guy that's working in a lab, and he's obviously working on a thing that means that he needs to be dealt with. And you've got this four-man team, and it starts off with um, Chris Pine kind of basically putting in a um, semi-tack OP. It's just him. But they they do it really, really well, where he's kind of staggered 100 metres away from a house. He's behind a, a couple of walls. You can tell that he's well cammed up. Like, it makes sense. And he's also tired. He's been there for a day and a half. He's falling asleep, all the real stuff. And then it goes into a bit where they're prepping to do a strike on this guy in a um, compound. And it's good. It's really good. It's well. It's really well paced. You can tell that whoever's advising it knew precisely what they were doing. And it's great. It then kind of goes off the rails a bit. But up until that point, it's such a pleasure to watch. Mm. Including a bit, a bit where they, been, they basically get bumped. And they have to extract. And they're kind of swimming in sewers. And have to kind of do a bit of... Um, you know, sear. a bit of sear and stuff. Uh, but it's it's it, when you enjoy watching people do stuff really well. There's a couple of movies that really kind of jump in, and that's a pleasure. Shooter with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, now this the reason why I bring up this up is for those of you who don't know. For straight men, Hugh is a former sniper. Uh, at what point do you stop being a sniper? Never. So yeah. A slightly out of practice sniper. Yeah. My qualification should probably they should probably expire at some point. I should yeah. get my When was the last time again. when was the last time you, you shot? Years ago. Okay. We'll take you on the range then. Oh one hundred percent go on the range. Come down, come down and shoot. Yeah. Um uh I because shooter I quite enjoy is a guilty ple ple pleasure yeah. of mine. But I'm not a sniper, obviously. What from if- from a sniper's perspective what I can almost tell he's in pain here. What what do you not like about it? What's your well, what's your the, view what, of Sniper? I enjoyed as a whole? the film as entertainment. Yeah. But when the TV nearly went out the window, the final straw was standing shot in a boat. Standing in mm. a boat unsupported by neither a support position for your weapon, fine, standing, mm. but also stable ground <laughs> shooting I don't know how far it was doesn't matter it could have been 100 metres fucking nightmare and then shoot some dude through in the boathouse isn't he standing the in most, the boat that is this, the most painful place to be shot in the boathouse in the boat in the bo- <laughs> <laughs> just like what the fuck entertainment do you know what I thought was a great um, I, do you know what I thought was a great if I remember correctly I thought it was a really good portrayal in some of the scenes of the process mm. uh, shooting uh, a sniping so yeah sniping was um, what's the one about Chris Kyle the American sniper yeah there is a couple of scenes in there mm. where he's in Iraq I think it is and just watching the sniper Chris Kyle the character mm. they go through the process of from you know identifying index, indexing the target mm. and then the whole process from there to shoot to extract I thought it was really good Unfortunately, mm. it was a lot of that was bullshit. You know that? There's some good stuff. A lot in of the, the Chris Kyle story was bullshit. Are you aware of that? Uh, no, I, yeah. I've heard things, but you yeah. know, who, who knows? Pulling the back to Assassin. Long yeah. kiss, good night. Yeah, great. The long that's oh, day, I've not the seen that in ages. Yeah. Oh, Gina Davis is one of the original like, female kick-ass heroines. Yeah. yeah, and she's a Mensa member as well, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. I think she was genius. I, I could be wrong. IQ here, but I think or something. I like think that. her career stalled. Because of Harvey Weinstein, I think she cut one of those Island people. After that, it oh, went really? one of those people that got that got fucked over by him. Basically, wouldn't agree to what he said and tanked her career. Really, I think I could be wrong because in the early nineties, she was she was big shit. Long Kiss Night was Gina Davis, Samuel L. Jackson. Mm-hmm. Who else was in that film? A guy who I really like, but I can never remember his name. And Harvey Weinstein. Me. No, <laughs> he didn't say no. I was also thinking. I don't know what my hat looks like, but his hat looks a little bit like Super Mario. Thank you for that. Uh, right. And he's on about Italy. Brian he Cox is in it. Is he? Yeah. The keyboard player from D-Rim. Is I'm he? Not- yeah. So my favourite guy is a guy called David Morse, um, who's a great American character actor that was also in The Rock. 
Um, Who does he play in The Rock? He's the second in command of the uh, dudes taking over the island. Oh, yeah. What's he look like? Uh, stand by. Cra- like guy craggy guy face. Oh, David Moyes. Yeah, show me that guy. I love him. Show me yeah. that guy. He's... he's um, show it to the camera. He's in things like... Um, right, right, not right, the Shawshank right, Redemption, right, the other right, one. Right. There you go. What's good. the... Uh, yeah. not, not the Shawshank Redemption. Green oh, Mile. Green Mile. Green yeah. Mile. yeah. He's, he's a really good actor. But a long list of ama- ama- mm. amazing American character actors. Atomic Blonde. Yes. Oh, can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, Tommy Blonde. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's why we're here to talk about these films. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> not the not the not the assassin part of it, but for me, there's a big thing that's been going on for ages now. It's not like it's new new you, uh, new news. That film, uh, the guy that did the stunt coordination for it, then went on to direct Extraction One and Extraction Two. Sam Hargreaves. Hargreaves. Yeah. And Atomic Blonde has probably one of my favourite stunt slash fighting sequences on film ever which is the sequence in the stairwell oh it's brutal and, the, and so remember this film Chad Stahelski uh, was Charlie's Theron uh, 1980s Berlin great soundtrack yeah uh, soundtrack I was, I was pissed when I watched this yeah I don't know definitely I watch worth it. rewatch it the soundtrack the soundtrack, soundtrack. really so, yeah okay it's, so it's, it's, what's been happening for, so it for is little, a good movie it's yeah, let it's, down, it's let down by the ending I have to say the yeah, ending fine, but the, the endings the ending's a bit hokey. put it this way when I watch it I just want to drink vodka on the rocks and smoke cigarettes it's, it's very pretty, stylish pretty, it's pretty quite cool. it's, yeah the soundtrack is so basically um, it's, it's really been happening a lot recently so Chad Stahelski was a stunt guy then a stunt coordinator then he was a second unit uh, director um, I did like one, a couple of days on the Brothers Grimsby when I first started can I ask you to pause a second yes explain second unit director for people who don't know what that is so first unit is normally the actors speaking um, the script a lot of the second unit can be anything from uh, cutaways to stunt sequences to give me an example of a cutaway I don't know. Uh, a guy walks into a shop, orders a cup of coffee, and they cut to the front of the coffee machine as they make the coffee. Ah, like hands doing typing and stuff. It's it's stuff that is normally shot completely separately because the actors don't need to be there, and time is is very expensive with these people. But what's really important so is that to a second unit director. Let's say you're you know the the vision of the director, the overall director is specific. And so they have to be able to trust the second unit director to basically cover what they need to cover in a way that is visually the same as the first unit director. But when it comes to action films, what's been happening a lot more is um, stunt coordinators and stunt people are fucking great at what they do, and they've been doing it for years. And so what Sam Hargraves is doing was basically you do a lot of stuff called previs for stunts, where the stunt people will say, right, we are going to do a big sequence in a corridor. And how do we make this look cool? And they'll have all of the stunt performers that are going to do what they're going to do. And they work out, how does this work? How do we need to go from A to B, make it look cool, put a fall in, do some fighting here? And then what happens is this: they'll do the previs and the second unit director, or more likely the stunt coordinator, will get a camera up and just cover it. And they get so good at this, that then basically what happens is that they end up doing second unit direction. And then John Wick happens. So Chad Stahelski was stuntman, stunt coordinator, second unit director. I worked with him on, um, I did a, a bare arms type job on the Brothers Grimsby. As he was doing that, he had just finished Wick. So John Wick had a budget of 20 million. First one, don't know. Which is not mm. big. But yeah. the reason that John Wick is so good is because he's working with people. Um, so going back a little bit to Bourne and how Bourne evolved... Born was Paul Greengrass and it was the kind of quote unquote beginning of shaky cam. And that was handheld, everything's a bit shaky, it's a bit we're in and out, they're fighting, it's a bit cool. When that first started with Born, that looked great. But then what you end up at is taken when you've got a fifty five year old Liam Neeson trying to jump over a bunch of um uh backyard fences it's just one fence it's one it's, fence and it's like 20 and there's like shots. 20 cuts in oh, about it? three. It's, it's like cut 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 I'll cut, show cut. it to you afterwards it's it's hilariously bad let me finish because, yeah sorry yeah. so now we go into John Wick and the reason that John Wick works is that you have stunt performers who are essentially like dancers who are learning like 20 move sequences that they can just stick in a wide and follow and that's pro- it's hats off to Keanu Reeves. We've all seen the kind of stuff with him at um, Tarrant Tactical doing all of the kind of ranch stuff. But you are learning to dance in a way that you're memorizing whole sequences and covering it in a one shot. 
And then being able, as a second unit director, or in this case, the director, to put it together in a way that just looks fucking great. And then that, that bounces forward to Sam Hargreaves, who, when you go and watch the behind the scenes for Extraction, there's a couple of really good one-shot sequences. And there's a certain sequence um, where Sam Hargreaves is the camera operator, and it's a one-shot of a car uh, chase through the streets. And there's a moment where the car basically crashes into each other and the camera goes from the bonnet of one through the window of the other one and, and, and the scene continues. But when you actually watch the BTS, you've got Sam Hargraves on the bonnet of one of these cars with a, a white stunt rig vest on, a grip behind him with a safety system, basically, so he's stuck on this car. The moment the car crashes into the other car, the grip leans forward, unclips the safety vest and camp and the sound basically keeps moving forwards and then sticks the camera to the back window of this car. And the shot is flawless, absolutely bonkers to achieve. But then you start getting these amazing sequences. Keanu Reeves, sorry, just quickly. Yeah. Keanu Reeves, thinking about it, was actually involved in two watershed moments in action movies, if you want to think of it like that, I think. You Matrix. John Wick. The Matrix. Yeah, and, and before that, mm. The Matrix, because those, those sequence shots, you think about mm. the corridor shot in the lobby shot, in the lobby scene, sorry, mm. in the Matrix with him and Trinity, like unbelievable. Nothing mm. like that before. Nothing like you know. It changed things, and then John Wick did the same. There've been fight sequences and like it, like they had in in films before that, mm. but John Wick switched it up again, didn't it? And Keanu Reeves was in both of them. What is what is indicative of this is when you allow stunt coordinators more free reign, more creative control. That is what can happen. Whereas that's not always the case. But for instance, with uh, um, The Matrix, the stunt guys had a lot more creative control about what they were going to do. Similarly with John Wick. And allowing them to do that, as you say, can create some amazing scenes. What frustrates me slightly is when you have one shots, that actually what's more interesting for me is watching the behind the scenes mm of them doing it and the technical achievement of how they did it rather than the actual what you I think one shot's you, kind of they're really get. big for I mean one mm. shot started really with um, the last sequence of Children of Men oh. which is so good um, there's there's so Remind much me that sequence? so it's I don't know 2006 it's or in so. the, the Fibra yeah uh, so no Children of Men is um, no children at the end of the world no I know one, that but this, the, the last scene is the Fibra when, when they're in the yeah they're, they're basically yeah. the Fibra situation you've got um, yeah. Clive Owen and yeah. the girl that he's protecting and the girl's got the first baby that has ever been born in a long yeah. period of time and it starts it just runs like 15 odd minutes mm. and it goes through the streets there's stuff going on I hadn't realised that was one shot it's all one shot well, that, well that's 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 what's so good about it because it, it's so tense and it, because it's a one shot but what happens nowadays is you get a lot of people doing a one shot because they want to do a, a one shot not because not what needed. it actually brings to the well, film well Boiling Point did that right Boiling Point yes. could have been a great movie without it being one shot yeah yeah, and it, I knowing was, I that it's say, one, the whole film's one shot makes mm. it better. It would have been brilliant without it, I think. But that, but that's done for the tension because it's all about the tense of being oh. being in a kitchen. Cutting away to something else gives you that release, and so it's all about tension being a, working in a kitchen, a professional kitchen. It's tense, so it's uh, keeping that tension. We need to do an episode up. on one shots. I, I'm not so, a fan of one shots. I'm, I'm just going to whinge either. about them. The oh, whole fuck time. me then. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not that it's something we don't have to talk about because there's there's a lot of great one shots out there. Like Atonement has a brilliant one shot, and that's the scene when they come off the beach and it just goes on. Okay. But one shots are never actually one shots. One shots are cleverly stitched cleverly together. stitched together. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. There is one film that I know of. I, I think it's called Victoria. That is technically a one shot. One shot. And they shot it three times. So you're telling me Boiling Point is no, 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 no. Boiling Point is, um, and Boiling Point is interesting because they Philip Brantini. they shot it four times, yeah. I believe. And this was as lockdown was starting. This was literally as lockdown was okay. starting, and they got it. The first three times they never quite nailed it, and it was the fourth one that was literally the last one they did. Everything worked because it requires a lot of rehearsal, a lot of prep work it's almost like a play Stephen Graham incidentally said yes to the podcast during the lockdown <sighs> I need to follow it up CBG's the oh. I know I know I know and not directly to me is yeah. it? I've got a someone in mm. between who asked him 
yeah. on my behalf. So we, we've yeah. talked about this before, Need to get but, but, but the about about horror, good horror is about the building of tension, releasing of the tension, and then a scare. Mm. Um, bad horror just stays at a level. Any any good film will have press and release, tension and release, unless you're trying to create something that is deliberately tension the whole time. But in there, there will still be release. When it comes to one-shots, the problem is they can get quite samey. You can get quite... Your senses get dulled by seeing the same thing again and again. So the technical achievement of doing something as a one-shot can be can be over, uh, sort of overwhelmed by how one note the thing can become because you're ju- you're not you don't get that release you don't get that different perspective. There are times when it's done really well, and there are times when it's just it's like, did this need to be a one shot? Uh, there's things like, have you seen Birdman? Mm-hmm. Great film. Yeah, that's not quite a one shot. There's, there's, it's cleverly stitched in. There, I didn't realise it was meant to be. Well, it, if you if you watch it, it is. It's a one shot. It goes all the way through as a one shot, but it is many scenes stitched. How did we get what what assassin movie we on about there? Brought up one shot. Um, John Wick, Atomic Blonde. And John Wick, yeah. Atomic Blonde. But Atomic Blonde, definitely go back and rewatch it because there's oh, really, some yeah. brilliant fight scenes in there. The one, one of my favorite, and, and the soundtrack adds to it. The soundtrack is so good. One of my favorite bits is um, uh, her being picked up from the airport in the car and then it realizing she's been snatched. It makes me want so to. Good. Every, there's a car that I've always wanted to own, uh, which is a mid 80s BMW E28 5 Series. And I watched that movie, and all I want to do is like, I want to buy that car so bad. And I want to drive around town <laughs> listening to Nine and Nine Sigloff by Nine and Nine. The uh, there's there, there's a there's a bit in it with a sniper hanging out of a window. There's a, there's either a bit where a sniper's hanging out of a window, really obvious, or a sniper's really good because they're hiding. I can't remember which way round it is. I think they're hanging out of a window in its dark way. We've got yeah. one more that hasn't been mentioned already. So. Kay England yes. actually said Mr. and Mrs. Smith and, and said Lal does that count we've already talked about it yeah, yeah. excellent does yeah count. that does count does yeah, count yeah. okay so um, oh and his his, uh, his her husband said Leon which we did cool okay Jihan uh, said Killing Eve which we've mentioned but not hmm. talked about I haven't actually seen it so it, Jodie Comer yeah. is the best thing about that by far she's brilliant but she she is playing somebody who is quite unhinged and it is it's more about again what we were saying about what makes a good a good hitman film it's less about that sort of preparation and with her it's more about the improvisation it's about finding herself in a situa- situation and being able to improv her way out of it like either macgyvering some stuff or or putting on an act or you know twisting somebody around her finger uh, and it is it's a good watch I haven't watched the last series but I watched the first two and yeah it's a really good watch but I think it's based on some books okay yeah have you seen it? I'm on season three now I'm halfway through oh. season three it's it's okay it's different mm. I like it I, I, I don't I'm watching it because of lack of other options really I try not to watch much TV here's anymore. a question what haven't we seen in a kind of film, TV show, or whatever that would be a really interesting thing to watch? For, if, if you're going to make a film about you know hitmen doing hitmen stuff, what hasn't really been covered that would be really cool to see? So, a lot of the the hitman films, the hit happens fairly early on in the film. It's sort of a third of the way through or, or at the start and then the rest of the film is them either atoning for it or them trying to sort out a situation that's been fucked over what I would would what would be interesting to see I don't know if it'd make a good film but what would be interesting to see is the, pro- the process from start to end mm. a little bit like Day of the, ja- the Jackal yeah I think like climaxing in in whether the hit happens or not that kind of thing and that's I think the way that the Jay Jackal works though is you have got Edward Fox doing the prep stuff mm. and then you've got the French authorities yeah, you've got trying to catch him yeah. which gives it that kind of um, 
flavour. Yeah, it's sort of cat and mouse. But there are there are stuff. Hitman movies out there where it's not a rifle through a window. Should we? Um, should we? So we got the best assassin movies ranked by Tomatometer on Rotten Tomato. Should yeah. we have a look? I'm, you take your yeah, Tomatometer. Go I'm going to get my letterbox to I'd count over. Go on. I bet they're not assassin films, but let's go. All right, I'm trying to, I'm trying to open it up. The link's not working. Come on. Come on, bitch. Open a new tab. I've just, I've just got my new uh, letterbox account. What's a letterbox account? It's basically it's a, it's a film listing site for nerds. It's great. You can film create, listing site. You can create it. like a playlist. Right, I've got it. Okay. Oh, really? But okay. for instance, like I can go if I was going to do this and I was going to go assassin the movies, there will be a letterbox list mm. which lists like for instance, if you want to talk about the coolest motherfucking assassin that ever lived, it's Le Samurai. But it's you know that's 1965 and it's uh, quite okay. niche. <laughs> it's super niche, yeah. but it, you've got to mention it in the in the pantheon. Okay. Of, of oh, it, two boy. of the top three you I've never heard of. Go on then. All right, I'll say them both. So number one is The Killer, 1989. Okay. Who's in that? Chow Yun-Fat, Danny um, Lee. Well, Sammy. I was going to say earlier, we've it's missed directed that. by John Woo. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole bunch of and, kind of Hong Kong and Japanese mm, movies. And then the other one is 13 Assassins from 2010. 13 Assassins starring... Well, we've not talked about foreign language films. Is that this Antonio Banderas? Like, this looks like this is a foreign language film. Yeah. But Itchy the Killer. Synopsis. In this remake of a 1963 film based on historical events, Shinzeman Shimada leads a team of assassins in 19th century something. And it's all... 13 Assassins. Is that with Antonio Banderas? It's got a... No. no What's that one? No. That, 13 something. Th- this has got a 95% score um, from 10,000 plus ratings. Well, we just haven't gone into the world of foreign language films, yeah. which is bad on our okay. behalf. But there's just like Japan, Hong Kong have been you know, mm. doing fen- you know, amazing. No Country for Old Men is at number four. Okay. What the fuck? Number five. Go on, clue. Give you a clue. You can yeah, fine if you want to. Sicario's at number six. I quite like Looper, but I think the, the, the time rules don't match up. But <sighs> I'm not a fan of it. No. Uh, okay, number six is uh, number six is Sicario. Mm. Number seven is The Bourne Ultimatum. Number eight is Pulp Fiction. Interesting. Number nine is John Wick three. Number ten, John Wick three. Number ten is John Wick no. two. No, 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 that's wrong. No, no, no. no. Number, oh my god! So I've completely forgot one that's gonna is is you will probably say in a minute. Go on, Ghost Dog. Never seen it. Ghost Dog. It's Forrest a, Whitaker. Yeah. Uh, really? Jim, Isn't that an old boy remake? He though? can't be an assassin. He's got one eye, dude. Seriously, if you want to go and pull a movie out of the rack mm. or whatever tonight, that's not Atomic Blonde. I cannot recommend Ghost Dog more the than Ghost that. Dog. The way the, the, the sounds pipe. Hold on, let me set this up. So basically, mm. it's Jim Jarmusch who makes um, Jim Jarmusch movies. It's, weird it's, shit. It's kind of weird <laughs> shit. But just imagine you got RZA doing the the soundtrack. RZA's in it. If you're a Wu Tang fan, then um, you'll love it. But it's Forrest Whitaker plays this modern day samurai assassin in uh, New York in like 1995. Is Forrest Whitaker the assassin? Yes. I'm going to struggle. I'm going to struggle with this, bro. No, seriously. <laughs> he is the coolest motherfucker that ever walks. Okay. When you watch this movie, and what I love is that he lives on top of this building and he looks after um, pigeons. And what I really love is that he makes... What ma- film is this? Hey, this film. Right, Ghost okay. It's right. Kez, but with pigeons. <laughs> but the thing is, is that he makes his own guns. And you see him mm. making his own suppressor. And you go, that's fucking cool. You've got to admit that this isn't turbo ninja stuff here. It gets a bit fruity. But he is just the most badass dude you've ever seen. Bags has got his hand up. <laughs> Wanted. <laughs> Who's in that? Wanted. Mm, James curvy, McAvoy. Curvy bullets. Shooting round corners. Oh, curving the bullets round. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, I, what I do like about that is the is the ammunition and how fancy the Isn't ammunition Isn't that like a Marvel is. film? No, it's not. No. Is this where they whip the rifle like that? They spin the Such bullet. fucking nonsense. No, I mean, technically, physically, you could do that. Stop talking. You can bugs. do that with tanks. <laughs> it's called fling. 
you can curve rounds, not to the extent that they're doing, and you can't do it. It's impossible to do it with, with, with a handgun, just because the, the length of the barrel isn't long enough to impart fling. But you could do that with a, a tank. Okay. I mean, if you, if you scroll through these things, there's a couple... So what I love about Letterbox, everyone... Oh, that's my own thing. Um, is that you can say, right, hit my movies, I'm going to scroll through a list. And so if you're thinking about movies that you haven't watched that you want to watch that other people recommend you can go oh great I want to watch that yeah but how do you work out what's shit and what's not because you have people that you kind of end up trusting there like Christopher McQuarrie's got uh, his own list on who is he who is Christopher McQuarrie Mm -hmm. well so Christopher (sighs) McQuarrie um, his father whose name I can't remember was, 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 was one of the designers of Star Wars so he created all of the the looks and things mm. of stars. Christopher McQuarrie got his start by writing a film called The Usual Suspects. Oh, a well-known film. What a brilliant film. Yeah. Um, and now he is the author that does Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise. So I'm going to pull a few of this list. Go on then. Here, yep. That, is, that McHugh's about. list. Gross Point Blank. Oh, oh what a blank. film! Amazing. What a film! Amazing. Brilliant film. John Amazing. Cusack. He's Again, got a bit bonkers now though, isn't he? I don't know about him. Yeah, he'd be bonkers. Here's another one. Uh, Three Days of the Condor. Is that... That's not an assassin film, though, is it? It's not an assassin film, but... Is that the crash in the desert? No. No. So it's the flight of the... Condor. No, flight of something else. No, Three Days of the Condor is a... So Three um, Days of the Condor is directed by Sidney Pollack, and it's got... um, Your man. Max von Sydow in it, who plays the bad guy, Uh, but my man... Robert Robert Redford is the main guy. And, and I may have seen that years ago actually it's they a, actually remade it in a single season show that got cancelled by AMC called Rubicon which I really loved which had James Badgedale in it James and Badgedale. this is a, a kind of a quote unquote CIA offshoot and they they, they they read all of the stuff that gets printed to see if there's any codes and stuff in it and it's this kind of slightly janky office in the back end of somewhere in New York and Ice Bullet I is that what it's it. from? It's from this ma- movie. Is Thank it? you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's from the 70s. You can, let, you can let it go. But basically what happens is it all goes a bit Pete Tong and Max von Sydow leads this kind of team of hitmen into this office and it's just brutal. Yeah. And it's so good. Uh, it's more of a sort of a an espionage thr- thr- thriller um, of the consp- time. Conspiracy theory type thing. Um, three Days in the con- of the Condor. Th- three Days of the oh, Condor. Oh, I can't recommend it. That was in my top five. Mm. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It's it's all right. Yeah, for me personally. <laughs> yeah, but I like I like um, you like I Robert Redford. Redford. Yeah, I like Robert Redford too, <clears throat> but not as much as you. Okay, we've got the the, the original mechanic with Charles Bronson. That was nineteen seventy two. Haven't seen but it. That got remade with Statham. Mm, it did. The original's good. Uh, the Matador. Oh, Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Uh, never saw yeah, it. Never That's if you want a comedy either. one. Yeah, yeah. that's in Spain, funny. isn't it? Uh, something like that. Yeah. He's bloody like a, a washed up hitman. He's um, washed up and everything. He's shit. Pierce Brosnan. Oh, he's not. I love Pierce Brosnan. Thomas Crown Affair. What about him singing in Mamma Mia? Singing they all in Mamma Mia. Ha- it's a musical, Hugh. They one. all have yeah. to do it. And he can't sing. <laughs> he can't do music. Doesn't matter. Russell Crowe did in Les Mis. He can't sing. I've got a couple more. Yeah, go on. Smoking Aces. Now, Smoking Aces I was going to talk about because we talked about Chris Pine. I know someone who was in that. Is it your aunt? No. <laughs> so my brother's, my brother's wife is a producer that was one of her first films she ever worked on that was a young Chris Pine yeah being that was a young Chris Pine with, with bad teeth deliberately bad teeth not just okay not, I've got another one fixed teeth hold can we talk about Smoking yeah, yeah, Aces do it, do it, for a bit do it, do it. Smoking Aces it's got Ryan Reynolds in it as well it's Ryan Reynolds is one of his first ones it's got Ray Liotta in it the cast is packed it's got Jerry Piven in it Ryan Reynolds and Chris yeah. Pine to me you know I think it's to you I've spoken about pairs of actors before yeah. like Deca- to me if DiCaprio and Damon like competing actors in the same era is very similar mm. it, Jake Gyllenhaal and Jake Gyllenhaal and who's the vampire Robert Pattinson Ro- Jake Gyllenhaal Robert Pattinson how did I know that Chris Pine <laughs> and Ryan Reynolds to me are on the same like trajectory similar they, interesting they are very they're, they're, yeah. they're like wise wise do you ass not, smart do you not have ass. these pair ups yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 no you always do yeah Charlie Theron like- and Kate Blanchett no um, not Tommy Blonde Charlie Theron and Scarlett Johansson 
Charlize Theron is slightly older. Do you know what I really no. like Charlize Theron because she she's got because she's a, gorgeous. A, yeah, but when she was in what was the first Mad Max? Because I watched the second Fury Mad Road. Max. Yeah, Fury mm. Road. That's not the first Mad Max. That's not no, the first obviously, thing. yeah. Caveat: the first modern Mad Max um, was the fact that you believed that she was. You know, she she had. Oh, the, I refuse to watch it. It's shit, isn't it? What Fury Road? Yeah. No, I was, I, I was found it middling. I was, I know lots of people. I'm a love purist. It. Do you know what though? Mad Max. No, no, no. Fine. If you can say right, uh, Australian outback Mad Max, then Tina Turner, God bless. Yeah, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I saw Fury Road in Beyond the Thunderdome, super screen Atmos with all of the sound, and it was, it was a spectacle to be watched in a, in a movie theater. And when you watched it in a the movie theater, it was great. Yeah. Obviously, it's not a Mad Max, Mad Max movie, but I'm it's not close a massive enough. Tom Hardy fan either. I, I just found it very, very boring. It was like, we're going to drive this way. Oh, no, it turns what? Well, we're going to drive the other way. Like, do you remember, but I know do that's, you, that's Do you that's remember that? When was the last rare. time you watched the original Mad Max? The very first. Not. Were they police? They're coppers. Yeah, not since, like... What a not f- I watched since. it again maybe three or four years ago. What a film. It's not... And it's mm. not what I... Because I, when I think of Mad Max, I think Beyond the Thunderdome. Yeah. Or into the Thunder, whatever it's called, that one with Tina Turner. You think, okay, it's proper, like, you know, this is like proper just chaos post um, apocalypse. But mm. the original Mad Max, they're coppers. They're, they're trying to police the local town. Mental. Men- it's not, not what I remember. Very, very good. And Mel Gibson, actually, before he, be- he became a bit of a nut as well. But anyway. I anyway, ended up watching a. Apocalypse films, as you do. Apocalypse yes, films that's a really good one. That's yeah. a good one. Okay. The Gunman. What's the gunman? Remind me. The gunman is, um, oh Christ, the first name is going to escape me. I shouldn't do that. Sean Penn. And it came out uh, maybe 2015. Sean but do you Penn. know... Um, <laughs> Why are you doing that <laughs> face? It's fucking mental. <laughs> yeah, whatever the guy. But I think, do you know Billy Billingham? Yeah. I think he was the advisor on it. Mm. Uh-huh. And he turns up at the beginning of the movie inside of a, a compound. But basically, they're, they're these kind of contractors, ex-SF contractors in Africa. Um, and they have to do a hit. And actually, there is a sniper sequence in it that you kind of go... <clears throat> it's one of these long-range vehicles coming down the road at you sequences, which is a little bit like, okay. It all then goes Pete Tong. But they tried to get a lot of the rifle work in that kind of on point. We are at the two-hour mark. Shall we round this off? We don't have to rush it, but should we round this off with naming our favourite assassin character and our favourite assassin movie? Well, assassin movie is always going to be Day of the Jackal. It's just the best. I have to agree. It is just the best. I don't. I don't. It's because it, the book is so good. And they've managed to distill, which is rare, distill the book into a great film. Character-wise... I know what my answer is going to be, but it's not... I I, I sort of always get caught up with snipers rather than assassins. We haven't even talked about Tom Berenger. No, but it's not him. It's nothing to do with... (laughs) Like my favourite character has to be is twofold is either Ghost Dog but as a as a single character mm. he's just so great as a kind of side character is um, Vegan Mortensen his character in A History of Violence mm. I've never seen that that's great he's more of a gangster though than yeah not Eastern Promises he, History of Violence uh, maybe I'm getting them mixed up. It's the one where he's living a second life and he's um, yeah. running a coffee shop in a Is town. Ed Harris in it? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. I, no, I'm thinking of that one. It was. I thought he was a gangster. But in terms of Hitman movies, it has to be Day of the Jackal for me. I love Leon, but what I now know about Luc Besson does taint that a mm. fair bit. Oh. My favourite assassin movie... Mm newly decided today <laughs> is Sicario I, again I don't think Sicario is an assassin movie it has an assassin in it but it's all about uh, it's about her and it's about her being trapped in this situation where she's caught between 
doing the logical thing and the right thing. But but it, by, it, by that mm. argument, then Collateral isn't an assassin movie. It's all about Jamie Lee Fox. Is that his real name? Lee, Jamie Fox. All about Jamie Fox. Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Jamie Fox. Well, I I I could kind of agree with you there. It's it so, is. It but is not- doesn't mean it's not an assassin movie. Isn't it? So you're saying an assassin movie has to be where the main protagonist is the assassin? No, because Day of the Jackal, he's not the main protagonist. Or is okay, he? so Sicario is my favourite assassin movie, and you can't okay. disagree with me. Fine. Right. And my favourite assassin... Mm. That's a difficult one, actually. Because... I recently watched Layer Cake, and there's, there is... Dragon. Dragon. Good film, yeah. Do you know where I live? No. Fuck off then. Um, (laughs) (laughs) There is... There's there's a couple of assassinations in that. There is Daniel Craig assassinating... What's his name? I can't remember remember his name. Um, He... And it it was pre-Bond. And he's buggering around with a Luger in uh, Colmini's flat. Um, But there is... Mr. He's called Mr. Twinkle or something like that. Oh, I the guy who's on Brookside. Yeah, the Brookside guy. Yeah, he's yeah. great. Um, who's got the headphones on, and he's like, "Do you mind, mate? I'm trying to learn French." Oh no, no, the, the other guys from Brookside. <laughs> yeah, the other guys yeah. from Brookside. The uh, the um, oh, I can't remember, remember his name. Mr. Something. Mr. Twinkle or Mr. Tiptoes? Is it Tiptoes? No, Tiptoes is somebody else. But Neil. Um, a stunt coordinator I've worked with a few times he's in that film as Troop who is Michael Gambon's r- sort of right hand thug his, uh, his henchman and it's so funny seeing Neil 25 years younger <laughs> um, but yeah Dragon Dragon in that because you never you never really see him he's just this voice on the end of a phone and Daniel Craig hires this this hitman to come and take him out and they're I mean, waiting this for him this isn't really Hitman but it is Guy with a Rifle Ed Harris at Enemy at the Gates I was I was Ooh, thinking about a, thinking about Enemy at the Gates but that is that is Snipers, snipers rather than more, Hitman yeah. but yeah in terms uh, there's, there's an issue where you go you should never find Hitman cool but George Clooney in The American is cool why shouldn't you find them cool I don't know because they're doing something awful Who? George Clooney in the, in the American he's not technically a hitman he makes rifles for assassins but there's just this cool calm collected can do drinks coffee a little bit sexy mm. you know wouldn't mind being him I, I have to say I, re- I, I like Brad Pitt in uh, Mr. and uh, Mr. 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 Kid, he's just the guy man. I, I, he's he is so cocky He's Pete, dude. He's very funny. My favourite assassin is Alejandro from Sicario. Done? Yeah, and that's a grounded, mm. great answer. Mm. Thank like you. That, that last... <laughs> no, 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 but like Brad Pitt and Mr. and Mrs. Smith, when you when you watch Benicio Del Toro in that last sequence... Mine was not Hacienda, a great answer, Hugh. Mine was a bad it's answer. Just, it's like you could say the same thing about Anton Chigurh in no, Con- no, no Country for Old Men. It's just like, yeah, yeah, damn. Yeah. You went there. Got okay. it. Got it. Got it. I'm sure there's the somebody coins, they're that, lose their life. that we're mm. not thinking of. Somebody we forgot. I tell you, who else is an assassin in that film. Woody Harrelson. He ain't no country for old men. Is he an assassin? He turns up to kill your man. What's that name I can't pronounce? And That's that man, whose name I can't pronounce, yeah, no yeah. country for old men, was married to Penelope Cruz. Oh, Javier Bardem. Yeah, the same guy, isn't it? Yeah, Javier Bardem. Yeah. Who are you talking about just now then? You were saying some other name. I was talking about... So, obviously, you've got Javier Bardem is in um, No Country, no Country for Old Men. Yeah. And it was... Um, brain has melted. Benicio Del Toro in Sicario. You were saying some other crazy Spanish name is now. I've, met, I've forgotten. Okay. I've forgotten. But there is a weird... There's a Cormac McCarthy movie called The Counselor that has most of them in it, which is... It, I think everyone said yes to it because it was Cormac McCarthy who wrote it but it just didn't turn out well and no. there is the best hitman killing sequence 
in that I think to do I've the, seen that. to do the motorbike. And and this guy has recognised that one of his targets rides his motorbike <clears throat> down this particular road every day at a certain time. And he just turns up in his truck and the sequence takes ten minutes. And he's he looks like a cowboy and he's got there's a little phone wire and he basically gets this tiny little fucking like piano wire Ooh. and attaches it to the uh, attaches it to the thing and then runs it across the road and then hitches it off against the back end of his truck and then he puts these lights on the truck because he knows the guy's going to come and then you just hear and the, and the bike's coming and then in the moment before the bike comes he just flashes on the lights of the truck causes the guy to raise his head off his motorbike and fuck, off it goes Question to finish off. Yeah. This is a, this is a, you have to reply good or bad or yes or no. Okay, it's an assassin movie. We haven't thought about it mentioned by anyone. Tom Cruise, Valkyrie. I was thinking Valkyrie. No, because, you weren't. No, no, no. I Don't genuinely talk was. Shit, bags. No, I genuinely was because that's Macquarie as well. I think I could be uh, wrong. Is it? But um, Hitler assassination. I was, yeah, attempt. I was thinking about it because of the assassin and the nation mm. attempt. So that is a whole nother ball game, which is when you've got everybody trying to get one guy good or bad good or bad Valkyrie I haven't I've only watched it once and I've not seen it in a long time no, worth a watch. Worth a watch, yeah. Worth Colonel von Stauffenberg. Yeah, very sad what, what actually happened to him and what happened to all of the the Germans who who decided that enough was enough. Um, Rommel being one of them. Um, very tragic what happened to him. Um, I don't know if you know the story. He, he, um, he was basically hidden away and everyone was told that he'd been injured. Um, in battle and um, he was given the option of killing himself or they were going to kill his family um, so he did the only thing that he could he took his own life and they said he died of wounds that was that was what they because he was such a hero oh. of the Germans oh, that shit. they said he was he was he was injured in battle and he died of wounds whereas the truth was he was um, threatened with the death of his family if he didn't uh, comply. And on that cheery life. note, <laughs> <laughs> just, he like, assassinated himself. Yeah. I just yeah. want to put one thing at the end of here for any listeners that is Rommel adjacent. I'm trying to raise awareness about one of my favourite films of all time from 1969 with Michael Caine called Play Dirty. Okay. And there is some assassins in that. But if you want to watch a gritty grindhouse World War Two lesser seen movie, check it out. Okay. Social media, Alex. Alex, Alex Brockdorf on, on X. everything, yeah. Alex Brockdorf, the double F. I'm more on Instagram than X, to be brutally honest. X is a cesspool. <laughs> At Bear Arms Film. Bear Arms Film, yeah. And bags. Yeah. Sweet. Been a pleasure, guys. Thank you very much. Likewise. Cool. Apocalypse Apocalypse comes next. There, we need a discussion. Now or apocalypse later? <laughs> oh, oh, God. Bye. Bye. <laughs>